Welcome back to the second video in my student review series, a slightly insane project I've been working on to celebrate 5,000 subscribers. In fact, at the time of this video's release, I've hit 7,000 subscribers, which is absolutely absurd. So a huge thank you to everyone who has checked out my channel since the first video was released. My first video detailed the students from Abydos, Gehenna, and Trinity who are currently released on the global server. And so this video will feature everyone else. <laughs> so Arius Academy, Kyakiako, Millennium, Red Winter, Shan Haijing, SRT, Valkyrie, and Miku. <laughs> That's a lot. Um, when I say it out, I'll like that. So it's taken me some time to compile all the footage, thoughts, and edit everything together. So thank you for your patience while I've been putting this all together. Just like in my first video, I have left a lot of timestamps throughout this. So please don't feel like you have to watch it all in one go. In case you've skipped here from the first video, let me quickly reiterate that I won't be discussing how viable characters are for clearing the highest levels of total assault. That is something that other content creators like Kazu have covered in much greater detail, so please check out his channel if that is what you're looking for. However, if you've rolled a character or are planning on rolling a character and you're interested in their strengths, their playstyle, and what niches they can fill, then you're in the right place. One last addendum before we hop in. I can't believe this, but I've been mistakenly stating the wrong word for recollection libraries, and I wanted to correct that before we jump into this video. I guess I had it in my head that because the game is called Blue Archive, each character's story is archived after you befriend them. And when you go back to revisit these stories, it's their recollection library, which seemed like a very nice idea, but that's not true. <laughs> it's recollection lobby. Like you're going to a lobby to visit them again, not a library. So uh, unfortunately, English is still hard sometimes. So my apologies. It is lobby, not library. I hope that didn't detract too much in the first video. <laughs> We're just going to roll with it. Uh, but for the rest of the series, including this video, I'll be using lobby instead of library. <laughs> Anyway, with all this out of the way, let's jump into the next set of characters for our absolutely gigantic review, starting with the students of Arius Academy. Hidden away from the eyes of the General Student Council, within a forgotten section of Kivotos, lies the Arius Satellite School. Forced into hiding after its original campus was destroyed, Arius has been cut off from most of Kivotos for hundreds of years. The students of Arius are hardened to their poor living conditions, developing into powerful fighters in their own right. The most formidable amongst these students is the Arius Squad currently composed of four members who are excellent combatants. Referred to as Hime by her comrades, Hakari Atsuko is a kind-hearted soul in an otherwise cold district, and she shoulders whatever burdens she can to try and keep her squad mates up and moving. Although fleeting, her smile is said to be captivating to any who see it, and her compassion helps to heal the mental burdens sustained within the Arius district. Atsuko's compassionate nature combines with her harsh Arius upbringing to make her into quite the sturdy tank. Her EX skill gradually heals allies surrounding her for 30 seconds, and her passive skills increase her own evasion, particularly if she ever drops below 30% HP. 
Every 30 seconds, she will also throw down a smoke bomb that will increase evasion for all surrounding allies. All of this combines together to make Atsuko a very difficult tank for enemies to actually hit, while also healing allies surrounding her throughout the course of a battle. 30 seconds of continuous healing is quite generous, and although it heals slowly over time, the pulses of healing are rapid enough to bring most characters back to a safe range. This can make mission clearing considerably more stable, and she can be a fantastic help with healing-based firing drills as well as total assault Hieronymus. However, like all characters who heal over time, Atsuko's healing can be tricky when dealing with high-powered enemies that can chew through health faster than Atsuko can heal them. This is particularly noticeable due to Atsuko's low healing stat, which can only be improved through heavy investment in her healing equipment. So if you do want to run her, be prepared to spend some resources leveling up her healing capabilities. All of this being said, Atsuko is still a great healer tank combo who can make your entire team more difficult to hit while healing them throughout the course of a battle. So if you roll her and enjoy her playstyle, she is worth some investment to keep your team up and moving. Atsuko's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 5, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gacha rolls on any banner. Despite her tremendous anxiety and skittish nature, Tsuchinaga Hiyori serves as a resolute member of the area squad. As a long-range weapons specialist, Hiyori tends to engage with battle from afar, but that doesn't make her determination or her firepower any less powerful. Although the individual area students are strong on their own, they are even more powerful when working together, and this is most evident in the gameplay of Hiyori. Her EX skill will fire a powerful shot into a single opponent, but if there are any other area students in the party, Hiyori will also decrease the enemy's defense by a substantial amount. This defense debuff gets better the more area students there are. With one other area ally besides Hiyori, this defense shred is pretty respectable, but if you have two other Arius allies, this defense shred becomes very tremendous. Her passive skills increase her own crit damage, as well as the attack of all allies, and every 40 seconds, she will shoot a single enemy and decrease their defense by a small amount. As a single target damage dealer, Hiyori is pretty respectable on her own, but when paired with one or two other area students, her defense debuff is tremendously powerful. She can make quick work of powerful bosses during firing drills, bounties, and total assault Hieronymus. And with her EX skill only costing three, this ability is very spammable during a mission. However, Hiyori's strengths also highlight her greatest weakness, which is that she really requires a team to have two to three area students, including herself, to be fully effective, as her low base attack and damage scaling are really not enough to tear through a boss on their own without other area students activating her defense debuffs. Given that there are only three other area students in the entire game, the prospect of rolling multiple area students is considerably slimmer than other schools, which is pretty frustrating from a player's standpoint. If you do happen to be lucky enough to obtain her and at least one other area student, she is a ton of fun to play for a variety of missions, her ability to increase the attack of all allies is still quite valuable, 
So if you want to run her for that reason alone, that is very respectable. But if you want her defense debuff ability, you're going to have to have additional area students. Kiori's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 5, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gotcha rolls on any banner. As the most withdrawn member of the area squad, Imashino Misaki struggles with depression and the weight of her brutal upbringing, but she keeps herself moving forward all the same in order to keep her squad mates safe. Misaki's quick thinking and intelligence makes her an invaluable member of the area squad, and her tremendous strength allows her to wield a weaponry that would be difficult for most other students to shoulder. Misaki's gameplay is centered around damage over time. Her EX skill targets a single opponent and then fires a missile that will explode in an AoE around that opponent, burning enemies on the ground for 48 seconds. Her passive skills increase her own attack, as well as increasing her damage output against enemies inflicted with status ailments or debuffs. Every 50 seconds, she also increases her own attack power by a moderate amount. As an AoE damage dealer, Misaki has a surprisingly huge uptime on her burning projectiles, making it so that a single EX skill activation can last for a significant portion of a given battle. Her increased damage output against enemies with status ailments synergizes pretty well with her EX skill, allowing her auto attacks to deal more damage to burning opponents. However, I have found that Misaki's AoE is a little awkwardly spread out, as instead of a circular or rectangular AoE, it's very small circles that are spread out from each other, and they don't overlap very nicely, meaning that there is a non-zero chance that the AoE won't even hit the desired targets if they aren't standing right next to the burning flames. This is less of an issue for bosses like Hieronymus, which tend to hold still during a fight, but this is much more of a problem when you're doing mission clearing or other types of content, where enemy positioning can be a lot trickier to deal with. In addition, the inflexibility of her EX skill targeting can be pretty tricky to deal with, as you do have to target a single opponent as opposed to being able to move the EX skill targeting as you would like. All this being said, if you make sure to account for her awkward AoE spread, Misaki can be a very devastating damage dealer. Just make sure to practice with her AoE targeting so that you're familiar with how it works and how it will spread when it's actually activated. Misaki's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 5, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gotcha rolls on any banner. Last but not least is the captain of the area squad, Jomai Sauri. Abrasive and impulsive to a fault, Saori will do anything to protect those who matter to her, and she will stop at nothing to achieve her goals. In her efforts to keep those around her safe, Saori often puts her own needs last and has a long road ahead of her to find the happiness she has desperately needed in her long, difficult life. Saori's role as the leader of the area squad is not for show. She is a formidable force to be reckoned with. For her EX skill, Saori unleashes gunfire at a single opponent, which is guaranteed to deal crit damage. Her passive skills increase her own crit damage, and every 25 seconds, she deals a guaranteed critical hit to an opponent and further increases her overall crit damage even further. <laughs> her last passive increases her attack power with every additional area student in her party, although do note that both variations of Azusa can count towards this requirement. With her incredible crit damage, Saori is well equipped to grind through enemies, 
particularly with her ability to guarantee crits every 25 seconds or with her EX skill. Where she really shines is single target firing drills and total assault Hieronymus, as the high damage scaling on her EX skill, as well as the guaranteed crit damage, can deal gigantic blows to an opponent. Running her alongside Hiyori and or Azusa is a devastating combo, as Hiyori and Azusa will shred through a boss's defenses, and then Saori will deal massive damage to that enemy. However, to compensate for her high crit damage, Saori does have a much lower base attack, so she benefits greatly from heavy investment in her equipment as well as her skills to make her as damaging as possible. Although Saori's conditional attack passive is much less restrictive than Hiyori's, as Azusa does count towards the total number of area students, this ability is still pretty frustrating if you don't have those characters, or if you want to run other characters alongside Saori in your team comps. I hope that we see less of these restrictive abilities in the future. That being said, even without other area students or Azusa to buff her attack, Saori is still a crit monster. <laughs> and if you like her playstyle, just make sure to invest in her equipment and skills to fully maximize her potential and start hitting really hard. <laughs> Saori's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 5, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gacha rolls on any banner. In a bustling section of the city lies the Hyakiyako Alliance Academy, a district formed around festivals, idols, and finding the small joys in life. Although the leadership of Hyakiyako has gone through its fair share of power struggles, visitors to Hyakiyako will find themselves surrounded by friendly faces, excited shop owners, and gently cascading cherry blossoms from the trees above. None amongst Hyakiyako command the title of idol, quite like Waraku Chisei, whose fan base is so rabid within the district that Chisei branded merchandise can be found everywhere. <laughs> the actual person herself, however, is blissfully unperturbed by her superstar status, spending her time writing unique haikus and winning card games with superhuman speed. Chisei's laid-back attitude makes a full appearance in her gameplay, where her EX skill casually launches an AoE grenade into a group of opponents, which will slowly eat away at them over time. Her passive skills increase her attack, as well as granting her a 10% chance to deal burn damage during her auto attacks. Every 25 seconds, she shoots a small AoE grenade into her enemies. Although Chisei's EX skill might not seem impressive on paper, it can very reliably chew through opponents over time and has a wide enough radius to catch a large number of enemies within it. From a design standpoint, the visual UI of her skill is also very easy to see, as it burns brightly on screen to indicate its area of effect, which is just excellent work from the designers. I've been very impressed with Chisei as a damage dealer for missions, mob-based firing drills, and even mystic total assaults. However, Chisei's base attack is relatively low, so she benefits tremendously from investment in her equipment as well as her skills to get her AoE to hit as hard as possible. In addition, her damage does happen over time, which makes her a little outclassed by other Mystic damage dealers, but there aren't that many Mystic AoE characters, and as a two-star character who is easily obtainable from gacha rolls and events, 
I've found Chise to be a fantastic investment for mission clearing and harder content if you don't have anyone else to replace her. Chise's recollection lobby unlocks at friendship level 5 and she is a permanent character, obtainable by making gotcha rolls or from the numerous Hyakiyako themed events. Chisei's usual aloofness is shifted in her alternate form, where she is overcome with excitement at all the shiny sights and sounds of the beach. Swimsuit Chisei's EX skill throws three grenades in quick succession, applying a chunk of stun damage in small AoE clusters. If the enemies are already inflicted with crowd control effects, then Swimsuit Chisei's EX skill will deal even more damage, and the stun duration will be extended. Her passive skills buff her attack, as well as applying chill damage during her EX skill, and every 50 seconds she will shoot an enemy and stun them for several seconds. As an AoE damage dealer, Swimsuit Chise is great at chewing through mobs, as the AoE spread on each grenade bounce is reasonable enough to catch groups of enemies. This can be quite fun for firing drills, and she can even be used during Total Assault Pororodzilla. Unfortunately, her utility is a little more limited in regular stages, as enemies don't always clump up nicely together, and her EX skill can blank extra hits as a result. This feels particularly bad when her EX skill costs 6 to cast, which is a big consideration by itself if you want to run her for total assault. All this being said, Swimsuit Chisei can be great for applying chill and stun, so if you like her playstyle and her potential utility, I'd advise trying to pair her with a character who benefits from status ailments to really capitalize on her abilities. Swimsuit Chisei's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 3, and she is a limited character who is only available during the Momoyodo Beach Shack event. Although most of Hyakiyako focuses on festivals and idol events, Kuda Izuna is obsessed with becoming a ninja. As a member of the Provisional Ninjutsu Research Club, Izuna dedicates her free time to watching ninja movies, practicing ninjutsu, and cheerfully helping anyone who is in need of a ninja's services. As a character heavily focused on auto attacks, Izuna's EX skill uses her ninjutsu to teleport to a new location, after which her attack speed is substantially increased. Her passive skills increase her crit damage, as well as her damage output after activating her EX skill, and every six auto attacks, Izuna will chuck shurikens at her opponents that will explode in a small AoE. With her fast auto attacks and exploding shurikens combined, Izuna can dish out quite a bit of damage over the course of a fight. Izuna's rapid attacks can help to chew through enemy health bars much more quickly. Where she shines the brightest is in Total Assault Shirokuro, where her EX skill allows her to reposition away from Shiro's bombs, and her auto attacks deal consistent damage to the bosses over the course of the fight. As an auto attack based character, Izuna's immediate utility might not be as immediately impactful as other characters, and can take some getting used to if you normally use characters who deal loads of immediate damage with their EX skills. In addition, she tends to draw a lot of enemy fire as a frontline damage dealer, so if you do run her for clearing missions, you'll want to be careful to keep Izuna healed or shielded to prevent her from dropping. One last note is that she really benefits from investment in her equipment, as it will increase her auto attack damage substantially, 
but she isn't quite as expensive to level up as other characters if you do want to run her. Overall, Izuna is a ton of fun to run, and if you need a good auto attacker for content clearing or total assault, she can be a great addition to many teams. Izuna's Recollection Lobby is unlocked at Friendship Level 6, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gotcha rolls or by grinding Hard Mission 19-3. Although Izuna's ninjutsu is often very traditional, she transforms her ninja techniques to suit the beach in her alternate form. Whereas Izuna's regular form was based on auto attacks, swimsuit Izuna is aggressively stacked on her EX skill, which propels a powerful volleyball attack at a single target. When the volleyball connects, it also marks the opponent with focus fire, which encourages other allies to focus their attacks on that specific enemy. Her passive skills increase her attack speed, particularly after she successfully crits 25 times, and she will also blast a single enemy with bubbles every six attacks dealing damage and reducing their resistance to critical hits. I have absolutely loved playing Swimsuit Izuna. Her EX skill only costs two to cast, which makes it super spammable during missions, as well as firing drills, commissions, and total assault, especially when she is paired with other powerful damage dealers. Her attack animation also has a short windup, so her attack is launched very quickly after skill activation, making her fantastic for quickly picking off opponents. I've also really enjoyed her focus fire ability for boss fights, especially Gauz, who is a very frustrating boss to deal with in the second half of the fight. <laughs> And if you accidentally tag the wrong gauze, her skill is cheap enough to recast again on the right one as soon as it's available again. All this being said, Swimsuit Izuna is a frontline unit that has mystic armor, meaning that she will need close supervision for mission running to make sure that she doesn't drop. In addition, her base attack is similarly low to regular Izuna, so she benefits tremendously from additional investment, but the damage scaling on her EX skill is good enough that she isn't quite as expensive to level up before she starts dealing a ton of damage. With these considerations in mind, Swimsuit Izuna is a ton of fun to play and has a lot of utility for different game modes. If you enjoy the look of Swimsuit Izuna's playstyle, she is well worth rolling for when her limited banner comes around again. Swimsuit Izuna unlocks her recollection lobby at Friendship Level 6 and she is a limited character who is only available during the Momoyodo Beach Shack event. The Ninjutsu Research Society isn't the only eccentric club on Hyakiyako's campus. The members of the Inner Discipline Club are less concerned with festivals than they are with self-improvement. Whether that takes the form of sleeping, card gaming, or cooking. Isami Kaide is one of the club's three members, and when she isn't trying to become more graceful, she is obsessively dominating the card gaming world of Queen Mushi, a suspiciously Yu-Gi-Oh-esque game. <laughs> when Kaide is able to pry herself away from her Queen Mushi cards, her EX skill drops shields in an AoE onto on-field allies, which will last for 16 seconds. Her passive skills increase the durability of her shields, as well as the max HP of all on-field allies, and she also buffs the defense of the most sturdy ally every 40 seconds. Kaido's specialty is centered around survivability, 
Her passive skills help allies stay up on their feet with extra health, and her EX skill can ensure that they can tank hits from enemies for a short period of time. If you don't have another character for this, then she can be a huge help for keeping allies alive during mission running or even total assault. That being said, Kaede is definitely outclassed by some other shield characters in the game, as her own shields only last for 16 seconds and require allies to be relatively clustered for the shield AoE to hit them. However, if you don't have a good support character and you want more survivability for mission clearing, Kaede is a very defensible choice. She is a very stable character who can ensure allies are well protected from enemies, so don't discount her adorable charm if you're in need of a character to keep your team up and running. Kaede's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 6, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gotcha rolls on any banner. As the president of the Provisional Ninjutsu Research Club, Chidori Michiru is determined to spread the joy of ninjutsu to anyone she can, going so far as to make a YouTube channel dedicated to the wonders of ninjas. Although her club is technically not legitimate in the eyes of the Yin Yang Club, Michiru works hard every day to recruit more members so that she can spread ninjutsu appreciation as far as possible. Michiru's determination transfers to damage on the battlefield, where her EX skill shoots a firework in a straight line at a single target, dealing damage on impact and burning that enemy for 20 seconds. Her passive skills increase her crit damage, as well as her attack damage every 30 seconds. And she also gains additional crit damage for every additional ninjutsu research member who is in her party. Michiru is very reasonable for dishing out mystic damage. Her single target damage combined with her high crit damage makes her EX skill hit quite hard, which is great given that it has a cost of 5 to cast. This can be quite helpful for mission clearing, but she really shines in commissions, single target firing drills, and total assault. My biggest gripe with Michiru's design is the same issue I have with the Arius girls, and that is the conditional bonus of having fellow club members in the same team. At the time of writing, there are only three other ninjutsu research students who could be viable, and with all of them being three stars, it is harder to assemble a team with everyone together. However, even in isolation from her fellow club members, Michiru is still a fantastic damage dealer, so don't feel like you have to run her with other ninjutsu club members in order for her to be viable. Although she's certainly outclassed if you have better mystic damage dealers, Michiru is a fantastic choice for a variety of game modes, and well worth building if you need a good single target mystic character. Michiru's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 6, and she can only be unlocked from the Unconcealed Heart event. Amongst the eccentric faces of the Inner Discipline Club, Mitsuha Mimori is the most normal on the surface. Her days start early and are filled with an absurd number of tasks, all of which Mimori insists are necessary for becoming a high-class lady. Mimori's homemaking obsession spills into her gameplay, where she serves as an on-field support. Mimori's EX skill moves allies towards a picnic basket and increases everyone's attack speed upon arrival. Her passive skills increase her own defense, as well as the defense of all allies every 35 seconds. And every 45 seconds, she will gradually heal the ally with the lowest health. 
As an AoE attack speed buffer, Mimori has a lot of utility for firing drills as well as total assault Shirokuro or Gauze, as her EX skill can reposition allies out of the way of fire if timed just right. The AoE on her EX skill is wide enough to hit most of the stage, so there is very little risk of this whiffing if you do activate it. However, her skills do make Mimori a little more of a niche character, as she can provide some survivability and attack speed buffs for missions, but I find myself mainly using her for firing drills or total assaults if I need the attack speed buff. Mimori's role as a healer is also rather limited, as her healing stats are quite low, with the only way to improve them being her necklace equipment. This makes her a little less useful as the sole healer for a group, but she can provide some extra HP if an ally does need it. All of this being said, if you're in need of an attack speed buffer, then Mimori is one of the few who can buff an entire team at once, and she can be very helpful with a relatively low investment in her skills. Mimori's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 6, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gacha rolls. At the center of Hyakiyako's grand festivals is none other than the Festival Operations Department, a group of hardworking students who strive to make the festivals as enjoyable as possible. As one of the Festival Department members, Asahina Pina is a gigantic fan of gangster films. She styles herself as a respectable mafiosa, and is not afraid to get her hands dirty to keep visitors to the festivals safe from harm. <laughs> as a character centered around auto attacks, Kina's EX skill increases her auto attack power while decreasing the time between consecutive shots. Her passive skills increase her crit rate as well as her attack speed while standing still. And once per battle, if her health ever drops below 20%, she will immediately heal a chunk of health back. Hina is one of those characters who flies under the radar due to her auto attacks, but she can dish out a considerable amount of damage during the course of a fight. Her ability to heal once she drops below 20% health is absurdly useful, and it can ensure that she stays standing to continue firing for the remainder of the battle. Kina's EX skill is a little costly for the effect that it has. In addition, her healing stat is a little low, meaning that if you want to improve her self-healing, you'll want to put some levels into that passive, since none of her equipment can improve that stat. But the scaling on it is good enough to largely compensate for this during the course of a battle. Overall, Pina is a very reasonable character for content clearing. She has seen a lot of high-level play on the Japanese server due to her damage output and self-healing, and although she's somewhat outclassed by other piercing characters, she is well worth the investment if you need a good auto-attacker for your team. Kina's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 6, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gacha rolls or during Hyakiyako-themed events. While Pina serves as a vital member of the festival department, the whole operation would fall apart without the club's trusted president, Kawawa Shizuko. When she isn't handling festival planning and finances, Shizuko also serves as the resident idol for the Momoyodo Tea House, drawing in customers from all over Kivotos to see her in action. Shizuko's breadth of festival expertise comes into play with her EX skill, where she drops a festival cart onto the battlefield 
to serve as cover for on-field allies. Any characters around the cart will also improve their accuracy for 30 seconds. Her passive skills increase her own accuracy, as well as the crit rate of all allies. And every 25 seconds, she deals damage to a single enemy while decreasing that enemy's attack power. As a utility character, Shizuko is almost tailor-built for Total Assault Shirokuro, where her festival cart not only stops large oncoming attacks on both halves of the fight, but it can also bounce Shiro's large ball attack back at him <laughs> for a considerable amount of damage. This does require some good knowledge of the boss's attack patterns to properly time this, but when it does come together, it is very satisfying to see unfold. Shizuko's party-wide crit rate bonus is also a great advantage for this fight, and her ability to reduce the boss's attack power every 25 seconds is a huge help as well. However, Shizuko's utility is largely tied to the sturdiness of her cart, which requires some heavy investment in her HP to be fully usable. Given that her cart is much less useful for regular mission clearing, this makes her an expensive niche character to build. But if you do have the resources to level up her HP, she can be a fantastic support character for Shirokuro. Shizuko's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 6, and she is a permanent character obtainable from gacha rolls, from Hyakiyako themed events, or from the Tactical Challenge Shop. While Shizuko's regular form specializes in traditional festivals, her alternate form seeks to expand Hyakiyako's influence across Kivotos by capitalizing on beach restaurants. Swimsuit Shizuko's EX skill drops her temporarily onto the battlefield, drawing nearby allies towards her to receive shields at her location. These shields will last for a maximum of 30 seconds. <laughs> her passive skills increase the strength of her shields while also increasing the attack of all allies. And every 45 seconds, she will increase the crit damage of the most powerful ally on the field by a substantial amount. All of this combines together to make Swimsuit Shizuko an all-star of a support character. Her shields provide an absurd amount of protection from oncoming attacks for up to 30 seconds, and it only costs three to activate. Not only does this help with survivability, but Swimsuit Shizuko massively increases attack for all characters on the field. And as if that wasn't good enough, she will make your most powerful character hit even harder every 45 seconds. She makes fights comfier and faster, whether it's mission clearing, bounties, firing drills, and total assault. There are some considerations to keep in mind when playing Swimsuit Shizuko. Her EX skill does have a slight wind-up with her shield generation, as there is a small amount of time between her dropping onto the field and all characters running up to receive it, so making sure to account for that slight delay is vital, particularly for Total Assault Gauze, who can attack very quickly and very hard. <laughs> In addition, the AoE of her EX skill is quite good, but it won't hit all characters if they are too scattered apart, so you'll sometimes have to decide who to prioritize when dropping her shields. However, these are relatively small drawbacks to a very powerful support character, so if you don't have her already, Swimsuit Shizuko is well worth the investment when her event rolls around again. Swimsuit Shizuko's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 5, and she is only available during the Momoyodo Beach Shack event. 
as the head of the Interdiscipline Club, Kasuga Tsubaki seeks to embody the fullest extent of self-improvement by getting plenty of sleep. <laughs> Tsubaki is asleep more hours of the day than she is awake, but that does not keep her from accomplishing her daily tasks. On the contrary, she has mastered the art of sleepwalking, and she is often more powerful asleep than awake when it comes to battles. Tsubaki's unbelievable tenacity translates well to her gameplay. Tsubaki's EX skill taunts all enemies in a huge radius around her, while increasing her defense substantially to withstand oncoming attacks. Her passive skills increase her overall defense, particularly when she is reloading her weapon. And once per battle, if her health drops below 30%, she will recover a substantial amount of health. There is a good reason why Tsubaki is considered one of the best tanks in the game. Not only is she tremendously sturdy with high defense and HP, but she can draw aggro from a huge number of enemies surrounding her, forcing opponents to focus on attacking her instead of other allies. She is incredibly useful for a variety of game modes as a result, ensuring that her allies remain up and attacking while she takes the brunt of the enemy's damage. Tsubaki's emergency heal is also extremely useful, as it can immediately heal a gigantic amount of health when she falls below 30%. Similarly to Pina, Tsubaki does not have equipment that increases her healing capabilities, so you'll have to increase the passive skill itself in order to accomplish this. But this is a relatively minor gripe. Honestly, the biggest issue with Tsubaki is that she's so ubiquitous, it makes it hard to justify running other tanks when you have her as an option. But that doesn't mean she'll be the only tank you ever build, so don't neglect your other tanks when you're thinking of team comps. If you happen to get Tsubaki from gacha rolls or an event, she is definitely well worth investing in to make gameplay much smoother. Tsubaki's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 6, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gacha rolls or through the many Hyakiyako themed events. As the third member of the Ninjutsu Research Club, Ono Tsukuyo is determined to mask her appearance through ninjutsu, as she is tremendously self conscious about her height. Frequently anxious and prone to nervous outbreaks, the glue that helps keep Tsukuyo together is the infectious excitement and compassion of her friends, who always reassure her that she has a place within their ninja ranks. Tsukuyo's desire to stay hidden makes her gameplay rather interesting. When her EX skill is activated, she will heal every time she takes damage for 30 seconds. As a trade-off, her attack will decrease when her EX skill is activated. Her passive skills boost her maximum HP, as well as her ability to recover HP when inflicted with crowd control effects. And every seven auto attacks, she will deal a more damaging blow that will also reduce the enemy's defenses if they are person-sized. As a tank, Tsukuyo is relatively sturdy with her high HP and is able to heal from attacks with her EX skill, which makes her even sturdier when running for missions. Although she decreases her attack when she activates her EX skill, it isn't that noticeable, since tanks are geared for survivability and don't always need to dish out as much damage. Admittedly, Tsukuyo is a little outclassed by other tanks in the game, which kills me because of how endearing she is. Her gradual healing from that EX skill activation can be overcome by sufficiently powerful enemies, and her passive can only debuff person-sized enemies, making her really only useful for mission clearing. Her other passives are also very conditional, which is a shame, since giving her additional evasion would have been really flavorful. 
That being said, if you do want to run Tsukuyo, I would make sure to invest in her HP equipment, as she'll get improved HP recovery at equipment level 4 and above. I would also prioritize running her for mission clearing and events, as her passives will be able to debuff the person-sized enemies there. Tsukuyo's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 6, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gotcha rolls on any banner. Last, but certainly not least, is none other than Kosaka Wakamo. Unlike the other carefree, festival-loving students of Hyakiyako, Wakamo is one of the most notorious criminals in Kivotos. Sporting an unmistakable mask, her reputation as the Fox of Calamity precedes her, and the only person able to temper her battle lust is Sensei, with whom she has formed an unhealthy yandere-like obsession. <laughs> Wakamo's notoriety is not just for show. Her EX skill deals a series of high-powered shots to an enemy, after which the target is marked with a five-petaled flower. The petals will fall from this flower in a 10-second countdown, during which time any additional attacks from other allies will be racked up until the last petal falls and a massive explosion erupts from the target. The more damage that is dealt by allies during this 10 second span, the more damage will be dealt once the last petal has fallen. Her passive skills increase her overall attack as well as her damage output to bosses and every 25 seconds, she deals a high-powered shot to a single enemy. To say that Wakamo is a boss killer is an understatement. Her EX skill is so absurdly powerful that it makes teams revolve entirely around it, as it gains more power with every ally attack during that 10-second countdown. Shooting a boss with Wakamo and then hitting that enemy with low-cost EX skills can result in ludicrous damage once the explosion actually goes off, making Wakamo a powerhouse for mystic total assaults, joint firing drills, commissions, and hard missions. From a technical standpoint, Wakamo is a character that requires heavy investment and careful strategy, as she works best with other powerful strikers and buffers who can maximize the damage of that pedal explosion. As a result, she is a character who works best with other powerful characters, and that can get really expensive when it comes time to invest resources, but the power she does possess makes her extremely worthwhile to pull for if you are even remotely interested in her. Just like with Swimsuit Hoshino, Wakamo's regular form is what I call hyper-limited, where she can only be guaranteed on a four-day to one-week banner specifically meant for her. And there is a small chance of obtaining her from other hyper-limited banners whenever they roll around. That being said, hyper-limited banners always have a significant rate increase for all other three-star characters, so they're generally a great investment if you're looking for a bunch of characters all at once. If you want Wakamo specifically, I would highly recommend saving up Pyroxene for hyper-limited banners, since that is your best chance of obtaining her before she gets an official rerun. Wakamo's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 2, which is a mercy <laughs> after how difficult it is to obtain her. Wakamo does have an alternate form that is not hyper-limited. As Wakamo stalks Sensei across Kivotos, she takes the opportunity to enjoy the summertime in an alternate outfit. Although she wears a slightly different fox mask, swimsuit Wakamo is immediately recognizable, 
and is up to the same amount of mischief as her regular form. Her EX skill blasts an opponent several times, with each hit inflicting stun damage. Her passive skills increase her overall attack, particularly when an enemy has less than 30% health. In addition, every 60 seconds, her attack increases dramatically, triggering up to three times per battle. However, the trade-off is that Swimsuit Wakamo will take increased damage with every proc of this passive. As a single target damage dealer, Swimsuit Wakamo can be pretty devastating. With her attacks dealing considerable damage, the lower a target's health is. The additional stun damage is a very nice bonus, making her great for scrimmages and total assault hod. Her massive attack buff will only trigger every 60 seconds, which is a little less accomplishable for regular missions, but is very useful in Total Assault, where she will become the most powerful at the 3 minute mark of the 4 minute battle. That being said, her massive attack passive does come with a considerable defense debuff, and this decreased survivability is definitely something to be careful about. She doesn't have tremendous health or defense even at a base level, so she can be a bit of a glass cannon the longer that a battle goes on. Ensuring that you have good shields or healing to keep her up and moving is important for content clearing as a result. Despite this, Swimsuit Wakamo is a powerful character that fits a much needed niche in the game. And if you're in need of a character for Total Assault HOD, she can be a great investment if you happen to get her during your roles. Swimsuit Wakamo unlocks her Recollection Lobby at Friendship Level 5, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gotcha rolls on any banner. There aren't many schools who can claim the status of superpower within Kivotos, but Millennium Academy is one of the largest, most influential schools in the entire city, rivaling the giant districts of Gehenna and Trinity despite being a much younger academy. Millennium draws in more technically-minded students to its science and engineering programs, leading the way for the newest technological advancements across the city. However, this status as a school for the sciences does not mean that Millennium students can't defend themselves. On the contrary, their fighters are quite inventive, exploiting weaknesses in their opponent's defenses before blasting through them with tremendous force. Millennium's most feared military force is the Cleaning and Clearing Club, or C&C. The members of C&C often operate in the shadows under the direction of the Millennium Student Council, lowering the guard of their targets before springing their devastating traps. Within C&C, Murokasa Akane is a master of intelligence gathering and takes her role so seriously that she almost never appears without her maid disguise. However, her love of explosions often overcomes her better judgment, causing her to rack up massive bills for Millennium Student Council to clean up after her. Akane's tactical expertise appears in her gameplay, where her EX skill deals a chunk of damage to an opponent and substantially decreases their defense for 30 seconds. Her passive skills increase her movement speed, while granting a 10% chance to decrease an enemy's evasion during her auto attacks. And every 40 seconds, she'll deal a higher powered shot to a single enemy. As a support character, Akane is incredible at decreasing an enemy's defense for a whopping 30 seconds, making it substantially easier to tear through an opponent's HP, 
and with her EX skill only costing two to cast, this is tremendously spammable during missions, but it is especially valuable for firing drills as well as Total Assault Bina, where her defense debuff allows high power damage dealers to shred through the boss. Akane is a fantastic debuff character, but her damage dealing capacities are a little more limited. Her base attack is quite low, and so she really needs other high-powered characters to make full use of her defense debuff. In addition, her defense debuff is good at lower levels, but it becomes incredible at EX level 5, which does require quite a bit of investment to reach that point. If you have the resources to increase her EX skill level, and you have other good damage dealers to pair with her, Akane can be a very fun character for tearing through enemy defenses. Akane's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 9, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gotcha rolls or by using gold coins in the Total Assault Shop. The only time Akane will wear a non-made outfit is when a mission requires it, and pursuing a target on a bunny-themed cruise ship is one of those exceptions. While her regular form specializes in debuffs, Bunny Akane is all in on her explosives, with her EX skill throwing a pile of explosives towards her opponents, which will detonate in a powerful explosion when enemies enter the bomb's radius. Her passive skills increase her attack power, as well as the mystic damage of all allies and every 30 seconds, she throws a stick of dynamite at an opponent, exploding in a small AoE around them. Bunny Akane is a very fun mystic damage dealer. The AoE on her EX skill can hit a cluster of enemies very effectively, and with it only costing three to cast, it is very spammable throughout the course of a battle. Not only this, but if the explosives land right next to opponents, they will immediately detonate, making her very good at quickly knocking out enemies on the field. Bunny Akane's passive that increases the overall mystic damage from allies is also quite spectacular, making her fun not only for mission clearing, but also firing drills as well as mystic-based total assaults. The main drawback with Bunny Akane is that the AoE on her EX skill is deceptively small, as it has a huge drop range, but it will only explode if enemies are very close to the explosives themselves. As a result, you have to be very careful to place it nearby enemies, or it will lose its main utility. Unfortunately, this makes it a little difficult to justify running Bunny Akane for Total Assault Pororozilla, as her AoE can only reliably hit one Pororo at once, but her overall mystic damage buff can be good enough to warrant running her for this fight as well as other mystic-based content all the same. Bunny Akane definitely requires a bit of practice to get the AoE range of her explosives down, but she is a great character for clearing mystic content and is well worth building if you like her playstyle and you want a character to help with mission clearing, firing drills, or even total assault. Bunny Akane's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 6 and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gotcha rolls. Millennium is renowned for its secrecy, and there is no greater enigma than Tendo Addis, the peculiar but charming student who transferred to Millennium mid-semester. Although Addis has some computer-esque speech patterns, and she is strong enough to wield a railgun in battle, her earnest demeanor and infectious love of video games spreads to everyone around her, making her a beloved member of Millennium's student body. 
Addis's tremendous strength and adoration of video games transfers to her gameplay, where her EX skill unleashes a gigantic railgun blast that shoots in a straight line across the stage. This railgun blast gets stronger with every energy charge that Addis possesses, which accumulates every 25 seconds until two charges are reached. Whenever Addis uses her EX skill again, these charges will be reset to zero and she can start accumulating them once again. Addis's passive skills increase her crit rate, especially when using EX skills, as well as her overall attack power. As a damage dealer, Addis is absolutely incredible. Her EX skill has a gigantic range that can hit a ton of opponents as it blasts through them. And the longer you wait between EX activations, the more powerful this railgun blast will be as she accumulates energy charges. Combined with her incredibly high crit rate, Addis is very effective at clearing mobs during missions and firing drills, and she can also chew through the Pororos in Total Assault Pororozilla very effectively. <laughs> Addis's main drawback is that her skill is quite expensive to cast, and it does have a short wind-up animation, so there is a chance of missing enemies in the blast if they move out of the way before she fires. The more that you practice with this ability, the easier it is to gauge when you need to unleash it, but it does require some repetition to get used to. Because the cost of her EX skill is so large, it can sometimes be difficult to justify running her for other Total Assault missions, but if you do need a good damage dealer, whether it's single target or AoE, and you're okay with waiting for that railgun blast to charge up, she is a ton of fun to play. If you do happen to roll Otis and you want to use her in combat, just make sure to practice with the timing of her EX skill to get a better feel for it, as there is nothing more satisfying than wiping out an entire screen of opponents with one blast. Aris unlocks her recollection lobby at friendship level 8, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gacha rolls. While most of C&C take their roles as covert agents quite seriously, Ichinose Asuna wants nothing more than to have fun, and sees her C&C missions as a gateway to endless entertainment. This isn't to say that Asuna is incompetent. On the contrary, her combat skills and intuition are excellent, and she is so supernaturally lucky that she can sway the course of a mission by sheer luck alone. Asuna's excellent luck weaves into her gameplay, as her EX skill increases her evasion and moves her to a specified location a short distance away. Her passive skills increase her crit damage, as well as her attack speed after casting her EX skill, and every 20 seconds she shoots a higher powered shot at a single opponent. As an auto-attacker, Asuna's gameplay revolves around activating her EX skill just to keep her attack speed up, and her increased evasion can be excellent for taking less damage from her opponents. Asuna's EX skill is also quite reasonable to cast, which makes her a great addition for cycling through EX skills during mission clearing, or for Total Assault Shirokuro, or even Gauze if you need an additional auto-attacker. Asuna has seen some high-level play because of her evasive abilities, but this evasion comes at a notable price. Her base attack is a little lower than some other auto-attackers, and although her attack speed and crit can make up for this, she really benefits from spamming her EX skill just to keep her attack speed as high as possible, as well as pairing her with passive attack boosting support characters. If you do want to run her, it's also quite worthwhile to invest in her equipment to boost her crit damage as well as her overall attack. 
With all these considerations in mind, Asuna is a very defensible mystic damage dealer, and if you're in need of a good auto attacker for mystic runs or total assaults, she is very easy to obtain and to build. Asuna's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 6, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gacha rolls. If C&C missions are a source of entertainment for Asuna, then nothing is more exciting than an undercover operation on a bunny-themed cruise. Whereas Asuna's regular form focuses on auto attacks, Bunny Asuna is built for AoE damage and debuffing opponents. Her EX skill launches a huge AoE attack at a group of opponents, decreasing their defense in the process. Bunny Asuna's passives increase her max HP, as well as her attack speed after activating her EX skill, and every 35 seconds, her attack power is substantially increased. Bunny Asuna is one of the few characters who has a unique item, which substantially increases her attack at Friendship Level 20, and at Friendship Level 25, her attack buffing passive will also refund one bar of her EX cost. The range of Bunny Asuna's AoE is quite impressive. It can hit a huge AoE of mobs during missions and firing drills, and the modest defense debuff can be fantastic for pushing through an opponent's defenses. Paired with other powerful mystic damage dealers, Bunny Asuna can be great for lowering the defenses of enemies before they are pummeled by her fellow allies. At her base form, Bunny Asuna does suffer from a low base attack, which means that her own AoE attack can sometimes not be enough to take down a mob of enemies by herself. Her EX skill also costs a whopping 5 to cast, which, paired with her relatively low attack, can feel like a bit of a wasted opportunity when it does go off. That being said, Bunny Asuna's attack capabilities, as well as the cost of her EX skill, are substantially improved if you get her to friendship level 20 and 25, which will unlock the very good abilities of her unique item. So if you do like Bunny Asuna and you do want to make full use out of that gigantic AoE, increasing her friendship is well worth the investment. That being said, if you do want to start playing her before she reaches Friendship 20, just make sure to invest in her attack equipment and also pair her with other powerful mystic characters, as her defense debuff is significant enough that it can help sway a battle. Bunny Asuna's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 2, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gacha rolls. Although Millennium is known as a school for the sciences, it is also a school for technology, and the hackers of the Veritas Club are notorious for their technological capabilities. As the club's vice president, Kagami Chihiro looks after her fellow club members in President Himari's absence, and she tries to keep them out of trouble as best as possible. <laughs> When she isn't trying to clean up Veritas's latest hacking disaster, Chihiro uses her excellent programming abilities to help keep Millennium's mainframe up and running. Chihiro's technological prowess weaves into her gameplay, where her EX skill targets a single opponent and stuns them for a whopping 5 to 7 seconds if that opponent has piercing armor. Her passive skills increase her crit damage, as well as the power of crowd control abilities for all allies. And every 30 seconds, she decreases the attack power of the most powerful opponent on the field. Although Chihiro is certainly playable for regular mission clearing, she is tailor-built for Total Assault HOD, as she not only increases the potency of ally crowd control effects, but she also inflicts a huge amount of stun to HOD's pillars or the main body. 
She is easily one of the best characters for this fight as a result, and will make the entire run considerably smoother for relatively little resource investment. However, this does make her considerably less versatile for other game modes. Her base attack is very reasonable, but the fact that she can only target a single opponent makes her a little less helpful for mission clearing than other stun-based characters. In addition, her stun is conditional on the opponent having piercing armor, so if they have explosive or mystic armor, she is much less useful for those fights. If you do decide to run her for non-total assault game modes, I'd advise banking her EX skill to use on larger enemies or bosses to make the most out of her stun ability. Chihiro's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 5, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gacha rolls. Even amongst Millennium's secretive organizations, the Super Phenomenon Task Force is kept tightly under wraps. Izumi Moto Amy is one of only two members in the entire club, and she works to investigate the activities of the mysterious AI Decagrammaton. When Amy is not running around Kivotos investigating supernatural phenomena, she is trying to find ways to keep cool as her body temperature runs hotter than most. Amy's sturdiness and reliability is evident in her gameplay. Her EX skill allows her to gradually regain lost HP, whereas her passive skills increase her self-healing capabilities and resistance to crowd control effects when her HP drops below 50%. Every 15 seconds, she also shoots a wide shotgun blast into nearby opponents. As a sturdy tank, Amy is quite well equipped to defend against oncoming attacks, with her ability to recover lost HP making her even better at staying up and moving. Interestingly, Amy's passive damage dealing capabilities are where she shines the most. Her passive skill allows her to shoot an AoE blast every 15 seconds, which is surprisingly effective at catching clusters of enemies. That being said, Amy does require some considerable investment to get her to this point, as her base attack is rather low and needs some investment in her equipment and skills to get to a more reasonable number. In addition, Amy's self-healing skill is quite expensive for the marginal healing that it does, but it is a good panic button if she ever loses too much life. If you do like Amy and you have the resources to use on leveling up her equipment and skills, I've found her to be a pretty sturdy tank for a variety of game modes, and she's relatively easy to obtain. Amy's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 6, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gacha rolls or through the Joint Firing Drill Shop. As a semi-responsible member of Veritas, Omagari Hare spends most of her time developing new technology and maintaining Millennium servers at the cost of her sleep. <laughs> Hare subsists off of so many energy drinks that the Veritas club room is frequently covered in empty cans, and despite her best efforts, Hare has been unable to break this energy drink addiction. Hare's specialty on the battlefield lies in her robotic assistants, which are summoned to the battlefield with her EX skill to deal a wide AoE of stun damage. Her passive skills increase her own crit rate, as well as the evasion of all allies on the field, and every 30 seconds, she decreases the recovery capabilities of one enemy. Hare is one of the few characters who has a unique item, which substantially increases her base attack at friendship level 20, and at friendship level 25, her passive skill makes it even more difficult for enemies to recover health. 
with her EX skill, only costing four to cast. Hare is quite effective at stunning large groups of enemies, particularly since it takes very little time for her robots to act after being summoned to the field. I've really enjoyed her utility for mission clearing and for taking out firing drill mobs, and she's even helped out during bounties by stunning the Kitingers for long enough to finish them off. Hade's other passive is a little more niche, as it reduces the recovery abilities of an enemy for 15 seconds. This could be quite useful during some scrimmages, as enemies will receive bouts of healing to keep them up and moving, but which enemy is actually selected by Hade is more or less random, which makes her a little unreliable for these applications. Her AoE stun capabilities are decent enough for Total Assault HOD, although I've personally found myself running Yoshimi instead, just to deal slightly more damage. All this being said, if you do enjoy Hade's ability to stun enemies in a wide AoE, and you have the resources to make her attack more reasonable, then she can be a lot of fun for mission clearing. Hade's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 5, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gacha rolls or during Millennium-themed events. Millennium has quite the reputation for scientific inventions, and no club embodies that more fully than the Engineering Club. Although their inventions are not always the most practical, or the most safe to use, <laughs> the Engineering Club prides itself on their innovative spirit above all else. As one of the club's members, Nekozuka Hibiki often struggles to find the right words when speaking, but she is an incredibly precise engineer, specializing in mortars and long-range weaponry. When she isn't concocting new inventions, she spends her free time making cosplay outfits to wear in the safety of her home. When Hibiki enters battle, she is a powerful force to be reckoned with. Her EX skill launches a huge AoE of mortars onto the field, exploding as soon as they make contact with the ground. Her passive skills increase her crit damage, as well as the crit damage of all allies, and every 20 seconds, she shoots a high-powered mortar in a small AoE onto the field. To say that Hibiki is tremendously powerful would be an understatement. The range of her AoE and the damage that it inflicts is gigantic. And because the mortars overlap with each other, it is very difficult to whiff this attack. Her crit damage bonus is a huge boon to on-field allies as well, who can hit even harder when she is on the same team. Hibiki's damage output is so good that she can even out-damage on-field strikers, making her an incredible character for content clearing, bounties, commissions, firing drills, and total assault. The outer edges of Hibiki's AoE can sometimes be a little tricky to manage, as enemies don't always cluster nicely together, and one or two can be missed when placing her EX skill. But I've found this to be less of a concern when your on-field damage dealers will quickly take care of any stragglers. If you do end up rolling Hibiki, she is well worth the investment to play on your teams, and can be a ton of fun for clearing content. Hibiki's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 9, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gacha rolls. Hibiki's obsession with cosplay makes a full appearance in her alternate form, where she wears an old homemade cheerleading outfit alongside the other engineering club members. Like her regular form, cheerleader Hibiki still specializes in mortars, but she repurposes them for the Halo Festival. 
Her EX skill turns a t-shirt cannon into a gigantic AoE of damage, raining down upon most of the visible battlefield. Once her EX skill has been activated, she will also deal additional cheer damage as a small proportion of her attack for 120 seconds. Her passive skills allow her to do more damage the further away she is from her enemies, and every 40 seconds, she increases the attack power of herself and the ally with the most powerful attack on the field. Her last passive is a little more peculiar. She increases her own attack power, but decreases her crit damage at the same time. Cheerleader Hibiki's AoE is one of the largest in the entire game, covering most of the screen with a gigantic AoE as she rains damage down upon them. Her ability to buff another ally lets your team hit even harder, which makes pairing her with other powerful characters a fun way to clear content. However, Cheerleader Hibiki's massive AoE comes with a tremendous cost. Not only does the skill cost 7 to cast, but it has a much lower damage output due to its low damage scaling, as well as Cheerleader Hibiki's decreased crit damage. It is absolutely tragic because other massive AoE characters can still put out tremendous damage, but Cheerleader Hibiki hits a lot softer than she should have. If you're stubborn like me and you still want to run Cheerleader Hibiki on your team, I've found she works best with characters who can reduce her EX cost, as this will make it much easier to cast her skill during the course of a battle. Or alternatively, you can put some resources into her equipment just to try and make her hit as hard as possible once that massive EX skill does go off. Cheerleader Hibiki unlocks her Recollection Lobby at Friendship Level 3, and she can only be obtained from the On Your Mark Millennium event. As the president of both Veritas and the Super Phenomenon Task Force, Akeboshi Himari is quite an influential figure at Millennium and is one of the few people confident enough to openly antagonize Millennium's student council president. Kimari's tactical abilities make her a powerful support character, with her EX skill doubling the attack power of a single ally for 13 seconds. Her passive skills increase her own attack power, as well as the cost recovery of all EX skills by a substantial amount. And every 30 seconds, she'll target a single enemy and decrease their evasion from attacks. As a backline support unit, Himari is tremendously useful for a variety of different game modes. Her EX skill will massively increase the damage output from a powerful on-field ally. And even more importantly, her EX cost recovery passive makes it so that all allies can cast their EX skills more frequently. She is excellent for content clearing, as well as total assault, particularly total assault Chessed, where she can decrease the boss's evasion from attacks. Kimari's main weakness is the same as Akko's, which lies in the UI design of her EX skill. Just like with Akko, Kimari's EX skill requires you to highlight which character you want to apply the buff to, and the selected character will only glow a slightly brighter white compared to other characters. As a result, it requires some trial and error to get used to Himari's casting ability, but once you've mastered Himari, Akko, or any other character with this type of skill, it is much easier to adjust to this UI issue. With all of that considered, as a support character for buffing attack and EX cost recovery, Himari is a fantastic character and is well worth investing in for making your most damaging characters 
hit even harder during battle. Himari's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 6, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gotcha rolls. As the most responsible member of CNC, Kakudate Karin takes her position very seriously, taking copious amounts of time practicing her sniper shots, as well as taking on part-time jobs to try and pay back seminar for CNC's many bills. However, the trade-off is that Karin does not have much time to dedicate to schoolwork, and she frequently falls behind in her classes, particularly math. Karin's many hours of practice translates well into her gameplay, where her EX skill deals a high-powered shot into a single target from the backline. This EX attack deals even more damage if it targets extra-large enemies like bosses. Karin's passive skills increase her own attack as well as the attack of all allies, and every 40 seconds, she shoots another high-powered shot at a single enemy with a 50% chance to stun them. As a damage-dealing support, Karin is tremendously fun to play. Her EX skill deals an incredible amount of single-target damage, which only gets more powerful when you pair her against total assault bosses like Bina and Chesed. Her passive ability that increases attack for an entire team is also quite valuable for mission clearing, and her EX skill can easily tear through bosses on harder mission floors. However, it is important to note that Karin's EX skill has a massive wind-up animation, as she fires her sniper rifle from the back line, and it takes some time for that shot to hit an opponent. This can be tricky to deal with for bosses that shift stages, especially for Chesed, who will quickly shift between vulnerable and being heavily shielded. Learning the timing on Karin's EX skill, as well as boss attack patterns, is quite important to make the most out of her skill. This is much less of a concern for regular mission clearing, as her EX skill always highlights an opponent with a blue target, meaning that even if the enemy moves, the sniper shot will still hit them. If you like the utility of Karin for buffing team attacks and dealing massive damage herself, she can be well worth the investment if you happen to roll her, but just make sure to get a lot of practice in with her EX skill so that you can nail the timing of it. Karin's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 9, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gotcha rolls on any banner or by grinding Hard Mission 17-3. Ever the responsible club member, Karin has no hesitation donning a new outfit to accomplish her mission, even if it involves a bunny-themed operation. Bunny Karin directly joins the field as a striker, with her EX skill unloading a wide spray of gunfire into a mob of opponents, ignoring 30 to 48% of their defense depending on the EX skill level. Her passive skills increase her overall attack, as well as her crit rate while using EX skills, and every 25 seconds, she shoots a smaller AoE attack that ignores 20 to 32% of the enemy's defense. As a mob clearing unit, Bunny Karin is a ton of fun to play. Her EX skill covers a huge amount of the stage and has a very quick wind up. And with how much defense it ignores, she can deal a considerable amount of damage to a huge swath of enemies. As a result, Bunny Karin can be great for mission clearing, as well as mob-based firing drills. But where she shines the brightest is Total Assault Pororozilla, 
where her EX skill can tear through waves of Pedodos and dish out considerable damage to the boss itself. However, the trade-off for the massive damage and AoE is that Bunny Karin's EX skill costs a whopping 7 to cast, which makes it trickier to repeat during the course of a battle. Pairing her with students that increase cost recovery or discount her EX skill is very helpful. But if you still want to run her as is, then be prepared to wait very patiently for her massive attack to come online. Despite these considerations, I have had a ton of fun playing Bunny Karin, and if you enjoy her playstyle, I would definitely keep an eye out for when her banner comes back around again. Bunny Karin's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 2, and she is a limited character who is only available during the Bunny Chasers event. The Veritas Club is notorious for hacking into areas they aren't supposed to be, and none of their members exemplify this quite like Otose Kotama. A specialist in communications technology, Kotama has an obsession with wiretapping every single room she can get into even going so far as to wiretap the offices of Shale. <laughs> Kotama might be a menace in Kivotos, but she is a powerful ally to whoever she befriends. Her EX skill drops an AoE attack buff onto a group of allies, while her passive skills increase her own accuracy, as well as the attack power for all allies. Every 30 seconds, she'll attack a single enemy and reduce that enemy's attack power at the same time. Kotama's utility is tremendous in-game. Her attack buff has a wide enough AoE to catch all four students on the field, and it is substantial enough to significantly increase the damage dealt by all those allies. Increasing her star ranking to a 3 star unlocks the passive that increases ally attack power throughout the entire battle, which is well worth the elf investment. Kotama's added utility of decreasing an enemy's attack power means that she is fantastic for total assault, not to mention her great utility for mission clearing, bounties, commissions, and firing drills. It is important to keep in mind that the AoE radius of Kotama's buff isn't all-encompassing, meaning that if allies are sufficiently spread out on a stage, not all of them will be caught in the buff when it drops, so you'll have to carefully time when to drop her EX skill onto the field. In addition, there's a very slight wind-up animation to Kotama's buff actually being dropped onto the field, so it's best applied when allies aren't moving, or else you'll have to place it slightly ahead of them to make sure they run through it. Despite these considerations, Kotama is a very versatile support. And although I don't generally like saying that characters must be built by all players, Kotama is one of the few exceptions. She has such versatility for so many game modes, and with how easy she is to obtain, she is one of the few characters that I would suggest every player put some resources into building. Kotama's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 6, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gotcha rolls or with gold coins from the Total Assault Shop. While Hibiki often finds it difficult to speak, her fellow engineering club member Toyomi Kotori has the opposite problem. <laughs> Kotori's wide breadth of knowledge is second to none, but she often spooks people away with her lengthy lectures on engineering, physics, and general mechanics. Kotori's inventions are often focused on defensive capabilities, and she uses this to her advantage during battles. 
Her EX skill drops a small crate onto the field, and any allies in the vicinity will race towards it to pick up shields. Kotori's passive skills increase her crit damage, particularly after defeating an enemy, and every 35 seconds she deals damage to a small AoE of enemies in front of her. As an on-field striker, Kotori can be helpful for keeping allies up and moving with her shield generation. There aren't that many easily available shield characters, and her ability to prevent oncoming damage can be helpful for mission running. Because her EX skill repositions allies, this can also be helpful for avoiding bombs during Total Assault Shirokuro if you don't have someone else to help on this front. That being said, Kotori does suffer from trying to be a little bit of everything. Her skills are based around shield generation and crit damage, but her base attack and base healing are quite low, meaning you'll really want to invest in her attack and necklace equipment to make up the difference. Compared to other shield-granting characters in the game, Kotori is a little outclassed as a result, as it can be kind of difficult to increase the durability of her shields. But if you enjoy her role as a shielder and damage dealer, and have the resources to invest in her, she can be very reasonable to build, particularly with how easy she is to obtain. Kotori's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 6, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gacha rolls or during Millennium-themed events. While Kotama specializes in wiretapping every room she can find, her fellow Veritas club member Konuri Maki is obsessed with accessing confidential information, and she will hack into any server she can find to accomplish this. When she isn't getting scolded by Chihiro for breaking into servers, Maki loves graffiti art and will tag anything she can, including the many robots made by the engineering club. Maki combines her love of graffiti with her hacking capabilities to become a powerful on-field damage dealer. Her EX skill deals a huge amount of damage to a single target, increasing her own attack once the damage has been dealt. Every 25 seconds, Maki marks an enemy with a paintball and decreases their defense. And if Maki attacks that enemy in the next 15 seconds, she will deal a huge amount of extra damage to them. Her last passive skill increases her attack speed by a substantial amount. As a single target damage dealer, Maki is tremendously powerful. Her defense debuff, combined with her increased attack power, can be an excellent combination for tearing through enemies. And if she uses her EX skill while an enemy is marked, she will tear through that single enemy. <laughs> This is spectacular for boss battles, especially Total Assault Bina, but Maki's fast auto attacks make her very reasonable for completing missions and firing drills as well. However, playing Maki optimally requires patience and careful observation of her skill activation as she will do the most damage when an enemy is marked with her paintball, but only for the 15 seconds before that mark disappears. Waiting for her to lob a paintball before firing on an opponent is quite important and will require careful planning to make sure that her EX skill is available once an enemy is struck with the paintball. Once you do get the hang of Maki's skill rotation, she is a ton of fun to play, as her EX skill will quickly tear through an opponent's health. Not only this, but she is one of the few three-star characters whose elephs can be purchased from the Total Assault shop, which is well worth it if you need a good single-target piercing character for boss battles, 
or if you just want to run her as an auto attacker during regular mission clearing. Maki's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 8, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gotcha rolls or by using gold coins in the Total Assault Shop. Although Millennium is renowned for their technological achievements, not all of the school's clubs participate in scientific advancement, and none exemplify this fact quite like the Game Development Club. Despite their lofty title, the members of the Game Development Club spend more time playing games than actually developing them, <laughs> and they've earned the ire of the Millennium Student Council more than a few times as a result. As the club's illustrator, Saiba Midori loves retro aesthetics and integrates them into all of the club's games that do get made. Although she is often quieter than her boisterous sister Momoi, Midori is very outspoken when it comes to the games and the people that she loves and she always comes over-prepared for missions to make sure that everyone stays safe. As an on-field damage dealer, Midori is quite powerful by herself, but she really shines when paired with her sister Momoi. Midori's EX skill shoots five high-powered shots into her enemies, and if Momoi is a fellow team member, these attacks will deal poison damage on top of this. Midori's passive skills increase her own crit rate and attack speed, with an additional attack speed bonus if Momoi is a fellow ally. And every 25 seconds, Midori will recover HP for the ally with the lowest health besides herself. Even in the absence of Momoi, Midori is very fun. <laughs> Her EX skill can either target five separate enemies or focus down one large enemy, with her EX skill only costing three this ability is incredibly spammable during the course of a battle. Midori's modest healing abilities are also quite useful, as she will consistently heal the ally with the lowest HP every 25 seconds, which is a relatively quick amount of time during a mission. When Midori is paired with Momoi, however, she becomes even more powerful. In addition to a huge attack speed bonus, Midori will also deal poison damage with every EX attack, which can help with whittling away enemy health bars even more. This makes Midori a great character for missions, commissions, firing drills, and total assault chessed. The main weakness of Midori lies in her survivability. Midori's healing ability can be very useful during battle, but she cannot use it on herself, meaning that you'll still want a second healer or shielder to ensure that she remains standing. In addition, Midori's power being dependent on Momoi as a fellow party member can make team building a lot more restrictive. Although, I will note that Midori by herself is still powerful enough to be perfectly viable without Momoi present. When everything is said and done, Midori is one of my favorite characters to play. Her abilities are flexible and spammable, and given that her elephs are available from the Total Assault Shop, she is well worth picking up for content clearing. Midori's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 6, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gacha rolls or by using purple coins in the Total Assault Shop. Midori's more rambunctious, distractible sister Momoi is the resident scenario writer of the Game Development Club. Quick to make friends, and even quicker to challenge someone to a game, Momoi's enthusiasm is infectious. Just like Midori, Momoi becomes more powerful when the two of them are in the same team, 
Momoi's EX skill deals a huge swath of AoE damage to enemies in front of her, and she'll do extra burn damage if Midori is one of her allies. Her passive skills increase her crit rate and her attack power, with an additional attack bonus if Midori is in the same team, and every 30 seconds, her accuracy increases substantially. As an AoE damage dealer, Momoi is one of my favorite characters to play. The windup on her EX animation is extremely fast, and it is powerful enough to quickly shred through enemies caught within its wide range. Momoi's additional attack bonuses, as well as the burn damage when paired with Midori, is also quite powerful, as this can help bring down especially sturdy enemies that didn't drop from her EX activation. Momoi is a ton of fun for clearing missions, commissions, firing drills, and total assault chessed. Similarly to Midori, Momoi does benefit tremendously from Midori being on the same team, which can make team building a little more restrictive as a result. However, she is perfectly viable by herself if you want to run her alone with other characters. And if you do want that extra power boost, both her and Midori are available from the Total Assault shop and are a ton of fun to play together. Momoi's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 6, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gacha rolls or by using gold coins in the Total Assault Shop. At the head of CNC is Mikamo Neru, the feisty, quick-tempered redhead who is one of the most feared students at Millennium. Frequently acting before she thinks, Neru is quick to silence anyone who mocks her short stature. But Neru is tremendously compassionate, and she will stop at nothing to protect the people that she cares about. Neru's irritable personality and impulsive nature tie into her gameplay, where her EX skill shoots a fast series of gunshots into an opponent. Every 30 seconds, Neru will enter an enraged mode, increasing the power of her EX skill as well as her auto attacks for 20 seconds. Her final passive skill increases her overall crit damage. Neru is now one of the few characters who also has a unique item, which substantially increases her attack at friendship level 20, and at friendship level 25, her EX skill deals more damage when Neru is enraged. With her EX skill only costing 2 to cast, Neru is a very spammable character for mission clearing. If you wait until she becomes enraged, this power is increased even more so, which can be a lot of fun for quickly working through enemies. Interestingly, Neru's equipment is built a little more like a tank than a damage dealer. Her equipment is geared more towards crit resistance as opposed to crit rate, which pairs a bit oddly with her crit damage passive. Although this is very flavorful for her in-game persona, this unfortunately makes it so that there isn't really a good way to increase her crit rate, and with her somewhat lower base attack, this can make her crit damage a little less reliable than some other characters. However, with how spammable her EX skill is, if you do want to try running her, I would highly suggest investing in her attack equipment, as well as getting her friendship up to level 20, as this will massively improve her damage output. That being said, even at lower investment and friendship levels, Neru can still be a ton of fun to play, especially if you wait until she is enraged, as this will significantly increase her damage, and is well worth waiting for that to activate before using her EX skill. Neru's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 8, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gacha rolls 
or by grinding hard mission 15-3. Despite her many protests, Nehru begrudgingly changes into a new outfit for an undercover mission, all the while waiting for the chance to unleash her embarrassed rage in the heat of battle. When she does finally get the chance to let loose, Bunny Nehru's EX skill propels her across the battlefield, casting a sturdy shield on herself and dealing a sweeping attack to all enemies in a wide AoE around her. At EX levels 3 and higher, this EX attack will also taunt all enemies in a large circle around where Bunny Nehru lands. Bunny Nehru's passive skills increase her crit damage, as well as increasing damage dealt to person-sized enemies, and every 30 seconds, her evasion is increased substantially. As a huge fan of Nehru in the main story, Bunny Nehru is exactly what I was wanting from Nehru's regular form. She is a bundle of angry, vengeful energy that will literally leap into a group of enemies to keep her friends safe, which is not only flavorful, but is quite effective in her role as a tank. She is quite sturdy with her EX shield, and at EX levels 3 and above, Bunny Nehru can taunt enemies when she lands, which is incredible for keeping enemies off of her allies. She is a ton of fun to run during missions, bounties, firing drills, and total assault kaiten. Bunny Nehru does require a little investment in her EX skill to be fully effective, as the taunt ability is really valuable and only unlocks at EX levels 3 and above. In addition, she has a lower base attack than her regular form, so if you want to do any damage with her, you'll want to invest quite a bit in her attack equipment, as well as her crit damage passive, since she won't gain much extra damage elsewhere. All that being said, if you're also a fan of watching Bunny Nehru launch into opponents and have the resources to invest in her, I would definitely recommend pulling for her when her limited banner rolls around again. Bunny Nehru's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 4, and she is a limited character who is only available during the Bunny Chasers event. Above all the other clubs in Millennium is Seminar, the District Student Council. Known for their strict supervision of the student body, Seminar has a reputation for being an overbearing organization, although its few members try to alleviate that perception as best as they can. As the secretary of Seminar, Ushio Noa helps to run one of the most powerful offices in Kivotos, frequently appearing as Seminar's representative when President Ryo is indisposed. Although Noa is often laid back, taking time to tease her fellow council member Yuka, she is very tactful at managing a huge number of administrative tasks that would not be accomplished otherwise. In battle, Noa exploits enemy weaknesses, as her EX skill decreases the defense of a single opponent by a substantial amount, and inflicts the focus fire status upon that opponent. Every 30 seconds, she unloads gunfire into a single opponent, which will also extend the duration of status ailments and debuffs on that opponent and her final passive increases her max HP. As a support character, Noah's defense debuff is substantial enough to massively increase damage dealt to the targeted opponent, and her ability to focus fire on that opponent is quite useful for focusing down powerful enemies. All of this can be a huge boon in more difficult mission clearing and firing drills, but it can be particularly useful for Total Assault Gauze, as she can focus fire on the correct gauze during the second stage of that fight. 
However, similarly to debuff characters like Akane, Noah's base attack is quite low, making her contribution to damage dealing rather limited. Because her EX skill also focuses fire, you'll want to be careful with how you use it, as spamming it during a mission can result in weird attack patterns from your fellow allies. As a result, Noah is best run when you need a powerful support who can help debuff a boss or focus fire on a particular enemy, but she doesn't require too many resources to quickly become relevant. Noah's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 6, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gotcha rolls on any banner. Although most Millennium students are known for their technological prowess, a small subset are renowned for their athletic abilities, and no student exemplifies this more than Otohana Sumire. As the head of the athletics training club, Sumire is so dedicated to rigorous training that she often scares away potential recruits to the club, meaning that she spends most days training by herself on the Millennium Campus. Sumire's athletics training transfers to her gameplay, where her EX skill has her somersaulting all over the stage, shooting three high-powered shots in a wide AoE spread. Her passive skills increase her max HP and her defense so long as she is unaffected by crowd control effects and every 40 seconds, she increases her attack power for 20 seconds. As an AoE damage dealer, Sumire is quite effective at sweeping through enemies on the field. Her dramatic somersaults allow her to reposition as she fires, laying into enemies in different directions with every shot. As a result, she is quite effective at clearing mobs in missions and firing drills, and her EX skill is quite spammable with a cost of only three. She can also be quite useful for Total Assault Chessed, where her AoE attacks can hit a wide swath of oncoming opponents. However, Sumire does have some noticeable drawbacks that affect her overall utility. For one, Sumire's AoE attacks are not always the most predictable, making it so that she can sometimes miss enemies that you would have expected her to hit otherwise. More importantly, however, Sumire is a character who attacks at the very front of your party, but she does not use cover. <laughs> While this fits her personality of barreling headfirst into battle, it means she takes on a lot of damage very quickly, even with her increased HP and defense. If you do want to run Sumire, you'll want to make sure to bring a good healer or a shielder just to make sure that she stays up and running, particularly when it comes to mission clearing. That being said, she is a very reasonable AoE damage dealer who I just wish would use cover. <laughs> but it fits pretty well with her personality not to do so. Sumire's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 5, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gacha rolls or by using coins in the Joint Firing Drill Shop. At the head of Millennium's Engineering Club is Shiraishi Utaha who loves absurd engineering designs almost as much as she loves giving unconventional names to those designs, including her beloved turret named Thunder Gun that follows her around everywhere. As a backline special unit, Utaha's eccentric designs make a full appearance as her EX skill drops Thunder Gun onto the battlefield to dish out damage to nearby opponents for 30 seconds. Every 30 seconds, Utaha will drop a second smaller Thunder Gun Junior turret, which will deal a smaller amount of damage for 20 seconds. 
Utaha's other passive skills increase her overall attack, as well as increasing the max HP of all allies. Utaha is one of the few characters who has a unique item, which substantially increases Thundergun's attack speed at friendship level 20, and at friendship level 25, her passive skill will drop three turrets instead of just one. As a support unit, Utaha is great for increasing survivability of a team with her HP passive, as well as providing supporting gunfire with Thundergun and Thundergun Jr. If her turrets are dropped close enough to enemies, they can even act as small tanks, receiving all incoming damage from opponents. This makes Utaha very defensible for mission running, as well as niche applications like for Total Assault Pararodzilla, where the giant boss will target her turrets if they are close enough. However, Utaha's utility does have some considerable limits. Utaha's EX skill does have a noticeable windup. So if you're planning on using Thunder Gun as a tank, particularly for Total Assault Pararodzilla, make sure that you practice the timing on this so that you know exactly when Thunder Gun will hit the battlefield and start tanking damage for you. In addition, once the turrets are placed on the field, they become stationary, meaning that they will only be able to attack so long as enemies are still nearby. This can be alleviated by carefully timing Utaha's EX skill, but this is less practical with her passive skill, as she can sometimes drop Thundergun Jr. on the field when no enemies are present and completely whiff the skill as a result. All of this being said, if you like her playstyle and keep these considerations in mind, Utaha can serve as a great support character particularly with keeping opponent attacks off of your characters. Utaha's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 6, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gotcha rolls and the Tactical Challenge Shop. Utaha's wonderfully eccentric personality does not end with her regular form. As the Kivotos Halo Festival arrives at Millennium, she joins the rest of the Engineering Club as Millennium's resident cheerleaders. Cheerleader Utaha fights straight from the battlefield alongside her trusty Thunder Gun. Before activating Utaha's EX skill, Thunder Gun will intermittently deal auto attacks to opponents, shooting a larger blast every 30 seconds. But after Cheerleader Utaha activates her EX skill, Thunder Gun will be enhanced, and its attack power will substantially increase. In addition, it will now shoot a large blast every six auto attacks, as opposed to every 30 seconds. Cheerleader Utaha's other passive skills increase Thunder Gun's overall attack, and Thunder Gun will do additional damage to opponents that are affected by status ailments or debuffs. While Utaha's regular form is split between defensive capabilities and offensive capabilities, Cheerleader Utaha fully commits to being a damage dealer, and the results are fantastic. <laughs> Thunder Gun's auto attack power is quite impressive at its base level, but once Cheerleader Utaha's EX skill is activated, Thunder Gun hits harder and faster for an entire 90 seconds, which is an absurdly long time for this buff to be active. In addition, Thunder Gun has been outfitted with wheels, which makes it so the turret can actually move throughout the stage to continue dealing damage. All of this makes Cheerleader Utaha a very versatile damage dealer for clearing stages, firing drills, and commissions. However, there are still some considerations to keep in mind for playing Cheerleader Utaha. 
She is a frontline damage dealer with mystic armor, meaning that you'll want to keep a close eye on her during missions to make sure that she hasn't taken too much damage from opponents. In addition, the crit capabilities of Thundergun are somewhat limited, so you might not see gigantic crit damage numbers like you would with other characters. But if you enjoy Cheerleader Utaha's playstyle and her role as an auto attacker, then she doesn't require too many resources to quickly become usable. Cheerleader Utaha unlocks her recollection lobby at friendship level 3, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gotcha rolls. As one of the stricter members of Seminar, Hayase Yuka serves as Millennium's treasurer. Yuka takes her role as treasurer so seriously that she is sometimes feared more than Millennium's president, <laughs> as any club that earns a visit from Yuka has earned her wrath for misusing Millennium funds. Yuka's EX skill casts a sturdy shield on herself, which lasts for 15 seconds, and her passive skills increase her overall defense. Anytime Yuka takes cover, she recovers a portion of her health, and every 15 seconds, she deals a more powerful shot to a single opponent. Yuka is one of the few characters who has a unique item, which substantially increases her defense at friendship level 20, and at friendship level 25, her passive attack skill will also increase her evasion. As one of the first characters that Sensei meets in the story, Yuka is the first tank that is available to all players, and she is quite defensible as a result. She not only heals damage whenever she takes cover, but her EX skill makes her quite sturdy against enemy fire. Combined with her high defense, Yuka is a very solid tank for completing missions. Yuka's versatility is a little more limited for other game modes, as she doesn't have the ability to taunt enemies outside of her positioning on the field, and this can be more detrimental for harder game modes like scrimmage and bounties. However, for being a starter character, Yuka is a very reliable tank, even in later game missions. So if you're just starting out, don't hesitate to put some levels into her for running missions. Yuka's Recollection Lobby unlocks automatically at Friendship Level 1 during the game's tutorial, and she is obtained for free just for starting the game. As the Kivotos Halo Festival arrives at Millennium, Yuka takes to the field to represent her school. Exuberant with the energy from the Kivotos Halo Festival, Sports Day Yuka will propel herself across the field with her EX skill, prompting all other allies to follow her to that new location in order to pick up shields, which will last for a maximum of 25 seconds. Her passive skills increase her attack speed, as well as her own mystic damage upon coming to a complete stop. And every 30 seconds, she will either gain a shield or increase the effectiveness of her existing shield. Sports Day Yuka is an incredibly versatile tank. Not only does her EX skill provide shields to all allies for 25 seconds, she can also move them to a specified location, allowing allies to move out of the line of fire and reach a safer location. As a result, Sports Day Yuka is an incredibly useful tank that can protect her allies from oncoming fire while getting them out of harm's way, which makes her fantastic for mission clearing, as well as Total Assault Gauze and Shirokuro. Sports Day Yuka does have a noticeable windup with her EX skill, as she will jump first and then allies will follow after, so you'll have to ensure to give yourself enough time to get allies out of the line of fire, or else they can drop before obtaining their shields. You'll want to practice with Sports Day Yuka to get that timing down. All this being said, 
Sports Day Yuka is an incredibly fun tank to play and is so versatile for a variety of game modes. So if you want a great Mystic tank, she is well worth pulling for and building when her banner rolls around again. Sports Day Yuka unlocks her recollection lobby at Friendship Level 2, and she is a limited character who is only available during the Get Set Go Halo Festival event. Last but not least for Millennium is the shy president of the Game Development Club, Hanauka Yuzu, who struggles to speak to anyone outside the club room. Spending most of her time as a social recluse, Yuzu will only emerge when necessity demands, making sightings of her an infrequent occurrence. Despite her crippling social anxiety, Yuzu is an extremely talented gamer, activating UZ Queen mode to dominate opponents online. Once Yuzu is dragged onto the battlefield, she can be a powerful damage dealer. Her EX skill shoots a high-powered shot at a single opponent, blasting into a small AoE of damage upon contact. Her passive skills increase her crit damage, particularly when using her EX skill, and every 25 seconds, she will shoot a small AoE explosion at the enemy with the highest attack. Just like her in-story persona, Yuzu's power is not to be underestimated. The radius of her AoE damage may be relatively small, but her base attack and damage scaling are quite impressive, and her high crit damage allows her to deal huge amounts of damage to her opponents. Where Yuzu really shines is in Total Assault Bina, where she can deal loads of damage to the boss during the course of a battle. That being said, Yuzu's AoE range is rather small, so it's a little more difficult to use her for clearing mobs than other AoE-based characters. If you do want to utilize her AoE, you'll have to make sure to target enemies that are tightly clustered together to get the most out of her EX skill. However, her single target damage is honestly where she shines the most, so I don't feel too bad that her AoE range is as small as it is. Interestingly, some of the highest level players in the game have found that when Yuzu becomes a 5 star, she unlocks extra crit damage that makes her even more tremendously powerful. While this is 100% accurate, it is a huge amount of investment to reach that level, and not something I would recommend your average player do. If you happen to have a friend with a maxed out Yuzu, or if you really enjoy her and you have the resources to level her up, she is quite powerful at higher star levels, but do know that running her as just a 3 star for mission clearing or total assault is still very defensible without breaking the bank. Yuzu's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 8, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gotcha rolls on any banner. Although most academies reside within the Kivoto city proper, the Red Winter Academy resides within the snowy mountains at Kivotos's edge. The district is one of the physically largest schools in Kivotos, but it has a very small student body that is spread out across the sprawling campus. Covered in snow year-round, the district is frequently plagued with gunfire as students attempt weekly coups to overthrow the Red Winter Student Council. At the head of Red Winter Student Council is Rinkawa Cherino, the bombastic, deeply self-interested president who students try to depose with considerable regularity. 
When Cherry now isn't hoarding the school's supply of puddings in her secretariat office, she is finding ways to mask her true height, putting on a mustache for bravado and ordering more statues to display her ideal appearance. <laughs> Cherry No has remained the head of Red Winter despite numerous attempted revolutions because of her tremendous firepower. Her EX skill unleashes an AoE attack that hits almost the entire stage, shooting repeatedly for several seconds. Her passive skill increases her attack power, as well as the cost regeneration of all EX skills by a considerable amount. This EX cost regeneration is boosted even further with every additional Red Winter student in the party. Every 40 seconds, Cherry No applies Focus Fire on the enemy with the highest attack encouraging allies to focus their attacks on that opponent while also decreasing that enemy's resistance to crit damage. As an AoE damage dealer and utility character, Cherry No is an absolute powerhouse. The AoE spread on her EX skill is frankly absurd, and it has good enough damage scaling to wipe out mobs of enemies in every direction. This is fantastic for mission clearing, as well as firing drills, commissions, and total assault chessed. And her ability to decrease crit resistance and focus assaults on a powerful enemy is quite useful for boss battles. Her cost regeneration passive is the cherry on top. Although this ability technically gets better with each Red Winter student in her team, it still has absurd scaling <laughs> with just Cherry No in your team. And so she is often run as the sole Red Winter student just for this ability alone. Cherry No's absurd AoE and cost regeneration does come at a considerable cost, however. At base level, Cherry Nose EX skill costs 7 to cast, which is reduced to 5 at max level. A casting cost of 5 is much easier to achieve with Cherry Nose cost regeneration, but this makes her an expensive character to build. That being said, if you do have the resources for it, she is well worth the investment, as she is a tremendously useful character for any team that she is on, even if there are no other Red Winter allies alongside her. Cherry Nose Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 6, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gotcha rolls. When a hot springs resort suddenly appears on Red Winter grounds, it doesn't take long for Cherry No to take advantage of this, eating all the resort's manju that she can get her hands on. When Hot Springs Cherry No activates her EX skill, she rides into battle in her beloved tank, the Purgonator Number 1, dealing huge AoE blasts for 50 seconds. Her passive skills increase her attack power, as well as the crit damage of all allies, and every 15 seconds, she shoots an AoE blast into a group of opponents. Hot Springs Cherino is one of the few characters who has a unique item, which substantially increases her base attack at Friendship Level 20, and at Friendship Level 25, her passive AoE attack will be more powerful and deal additional damage over time. As an AoE damage dealer, Hot Springs Cherino is excellent at hitting large mobs of enemies. Her auto attacks happen frequently enough to cycle through waves of opponents, and with her crit damage bonus, your entire team deals more damage throughout the course of the battle. The scaling on this crit damage passive is the same as some of the best supports in the game, so it is a fantastic ability for her to have. 
Her passive attack skill also hits once every 15 seconds, which is absurdly quick and can even hit enemies when she is off the field. However, these frequent wide AoE attacks do come with a notable trade-off. Hot Springs Cherry No has a relatively low attack and damage scaling, so you'll need considerable investment in her attack and crit equipment in order to dish out damage. And this low base attack is largely alleviated once you get her to friendship level 20, but that does require a little bit of investment. So just keep in mind that you'll want to invest in her equipment until you get to that point. With all of this being said, if you happen to roll her and you like her playstyle, she is quite good at clearing mobs for missions as well as mob-based firing drills. So just make sure to invest in her equipment and potentially get her to friendship 20 to make her damage dealing capabilities even more substantial. Hot Springs Cherino unlocks her recollection lobby at friendship level 6, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gotcha rolls. At the head of Red Winter's militia is Ikekura Marina, who has been a participant in several attempted revolutions during her time in the district. When she isn't getting chewed out by Cherino, Marina is absolutely obsessed with the idea of befriending a bear and hopes to one day run into one during her many failed attempts at navigating Red Winter's huge campus. Marina's tactical prowess and leadership capabilities emerges in her gameplay, where she serves as an on-field tank during battle. Her EX skill summons a firing squad beside her, advancing forward while shooting a wide AoE of gunshots for several seconds. Any enemies that are struck by this attack will also have their healing recovery abilities decreased for 30 seconds. Her passive skills increase her evasion, particularly when using her EX skill, and once per battle, if her health drops below 20%, she will become invincible for at least 12 seconds. Marina's utility as a mob clearing tank is quite high, as the AoE range on Marina's EX skill is large enough to hit huge swaths of enemies as she marches forward. In fact, she moves so far forward during the EX skill's duration that she can even hit enemies who weren't initially in her AoE radius, which is fantastic for clearing groups of enemies. Her evasion also gives her decent survivability, and her passive is a nice panic button in case she drops below 20% life. That being said, Marina is still ultimately a tank, and her huge AoE does come at the cost of her base attack. This can be mitigated with investment in her EX skill as well as her attack equipment, but it's something to consider when trying to make the most out of her AoE attacks. In addition, she has low defense for a tank, which isn't the biggest issue during mission clearing, but can be more of a problem during commissions and firing drills. So if you do want to run her there, make sure to keep a close eye on her health so you can drop healing or shields whenever she needs it. All of this being said, I've found her to be a lot of fun for clearing mobs. And if you also like her playstyle, she can be well worth some investment into her equipment and skills to dish out more damage. Marina's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 5, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gotcha rolls. Although suspensions are a frequent occurrence at Red Winter, not all of these suspensions are a result of treasonous activity. In the case of Amami Nodoka, she was suspended for frequent and unrepentant peeping on other students through her giant telescope, and as a result, Nodoka has been exiled to the campus annex. However, this hasn't stopped her from trying to spy on other students, 
and even Sensei through the lens of her massive telescope. Despite her being a menace to Kivotos, Nodoka will still happily support your team, with her EX skill increasing ally accuracy in a wide circle for 30 seconds. Her passive skills increased her own accuracy, as well as the accuracy of all allies on the field, and every 20 seconds, she deals a modest amount of damage to a single enemy while decreasing their evasion. From a design standpoint, the visual design of Nodoka's EX skill is fantastic, as it glows a bright blue with dancing snowflakes and is very easy to tell which allies are inside. When it comes to gameplay, Nodoka might not have the most utility for mission clearing, but she is absolutely incredible for firing drills that have massive accuracy debuffs. Her EX skill and passive skills are excellent at counteracting accuracy debuffs, and she shines her brightest in these applications. As a result, Nodoka is quite a niche character who won't see the most utility in mission clearing or most other game modes, but she is great to have in your back pocket for firing drills when accuracy debuffs need to be counteracted. Nodoka's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 6, and she is only obtainable during the revolutionary Ivan Kupala event. When a Hot Springs Resort pops up on Red Winter's campus, Nodoka and her good friend Shigure are the first to, to reap the benefits, serving as the resort's new owners. Ever the opportunist, Hot Springs Nodoka puts on her best customer service smile to draw in visitors so that she can spy on them up close in the baths. <laughs> Despite continuing to be a menace to Kivotos, Hot Springs Nodoka brings her customer service smile to serve as a support character, with her EX skill dropping her onto the battlefield to continuously heal allies for 32 seconds. Her AoE healing is a little different from other healers, as she will cycle through healing allies one at a time, always picking the ally with the lowest health before switching to the next character three seconds later. Her passive skills increase her healing capabilities, as well as the attack of all allies and every 20 seconds, she improves the recovery capabilities of the ally with the lowest health. All of this is a lot of words to say that Hot Springs Nodica is an incredible AoE healer who will stay on the battlefield alongside your allies for 32 seconds as she rotates through healing every on-field character for a substantial amount. This is a spectacular skill for only costing four, and her added passive skill is the cherry on top, as it increases ally attack power and subsequently improves the damage dealt from all other allies. Hot Springs Nodoka excels in healing-based firing drills, but she also is fantastic for total assault particularly Total Assault Hieronymus, where she can heal on-field characters as well as the lanterns that debuff the boss throughout the fight. When it comes to regular mission clearing, Hot Springs Nodoka is slightly trickier to play. Her healing relies on characters remaining stationary, which is much more difficult to accomplish during missions when allies frequently move forward through the stage. Carefully timing the activation of her EX skill is vital, particularly since it costs four to cast. All of this being said, if you're able to carefully time her healing, the extra attack buff from her passive is more than good enough to make her more viable for mission clearing as a result, and she is absolutely fantastic for total assault. Hot Springs Nodoka unlocks her recollection lobby at Friendship Level 6, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gacha rolls. 
Nodoka is not the only student suspended in the annex. Her good friend, Mayoi Shigure, was suspended after she was caught fermenting kompot on school grounds. There are some rumors that Shigure was intentionally caught by the Secretariat so that Nodoka wouldn't be alone in the annex, but this is still speculative. Shigure's obsession with questionably alcoholic drinks is evident in her gameplay, where her EX skill throws a flask of alcohol in a huge AoE, bursting into flames that will burn opponents over time for 20 seconds. In addition, her passive skills grant her auto attacks a wider AoE in exchange for reduced damage, and every 30 seconds, she will greatly increase the attack of a fellow ally in exchange for lowering their accuracy. Her final passive increases her own crit rate. As an on-field striker and support, Shigure is a fascinating character. The AoE on her EX skill is quite massive, and with her reasonably high base attack, the initial attack and subsequent explosion can deal a very reasonable amount of damage to a mob of enemies. Shigure's AoE passive is quite good at hitting a cluster of enemies, although it should be noted that the damage of this AoE attack is a little lower than her regular attacks, so making sure to invest in her attack and crit equipment can help to offset this somewhat. Shigure's last passive is… wild. <laughs> It is a very high-risk, high-reward passive, where she can massively increase the attack of a fellow ally in exchange for decreasing their accuracy, which means that she is best paired with characters who don't suffer from a loss of accuracy. This does make her team comps a little more restrictive to build, which I'm not the biggest fan of from a design standpoint, but thankfully, there aren't too many explosive characters with low accuracy. If you do want to run Shigure, I'd make sure to avoid pairing her with these characters shown on screen, just in case her accuracy debuff lands on them. Overall, Shigure is a bit of a high-risk, high-reward character, but if you enjoy her, I would definitely suggest investing in her equipment and also being a little conscientious of which characters you pair her with when you run her for missions. Shigure's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 6, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gacha rolls. As Cherino's second in command, Sashiro Tomoe is one of the most influential students at Red Winter, and one of the few people who can disagree with Cherino without retribution. However, such disagreements are quite seldom, as Tomoe is Cherino's biggest and most obsessive fan, and goes to great lengths to ensure that Cherino's every need is met. Tomoe's supportive capabilities make a full appearance in her gameplay, where her EX skill buffs the crit rate, crit damage, and run speed of all characters in an AoE around her location, with any characters hit by her buff also reducing the range of their attacks in exchange. Her passive skills increase her attack power, as well as her damage output against enemies with shields, and every 30 seconds, she deals a larger strike to a single enemy. As an on-field support, Tomoe is fantastic for a variety of applications. The AoE range on Tomoe's buff is substantial enough to hit all allies, and even though the physical shooting distance decreases as a result, I have generally found this to have a minimal effect, as the crit rate and crit damage buffs largely make up for the difference. As her EX skill only costs 3 to cast, 
it is very easy to cycle through Tomoe's skill during a battle, which makes her fantastic for mission clearing as well as firing drills. That being said, it's important to note that Tomoe's EX skill depends on characters being nearby her, and although the EX radius is reasonably large, it does not cover the entire stage, so characters who are too far away will not receive her crit and speed buffs. This is less of a concern for firing drills, but is much more prevalent in missions, where allies can move out of range if Tomoe takes cover at the edge of a stage. Her EX skill also has a slight wind-up, so using it right before characters are about to move is not ideal, as Tomoe will stay in one place and whiff her buff as a result. Learning the timing of her EX skill and carefully casting it when allies are clustered together is important for maximizing her utility during battle. Despite these caveats, I'm a huge fan of Tomoe, especially as a character who is freely available just from playing an event. If you like her playstyle and are in need of a good support character to increase your damage output, she can be quite useful even with relatively low investment. Tomoe's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 5, and she is only obtainable from the Hot Springs Resort number 227 event. While Hyakiyako Academy focuses on festivals, the nearby Shanghai Jing Academy specializes in industry, sporting one of the most impressive merchant districts in the entire city. The district has an entire K-12 program, with students in the Plum Blossom Primary School moving on to the Shanghai Jing Secondary School once they are old enough. As one of the assistant teachers at Plum Blossom Primary, Tsunohara Kokona is determined to show her worthiness as an instructor, but her stubbornness and picky eating habits often cost her the respect of the students. However, Kokona has been trying to overcome her own weaknesses, and her earnest desire to teach is easily evident to anyone who knows her. With her trusty handouts and stamps in hand, Kokona serves as an on-field healer and support, with her EX skill healing a large amount of HP for herself and a selected ally. Once allies have crit 100 times, Kokona will also heal the ally with the lowest HP, which is repeatable once allies have crit another 100 times. Every time she casts this passive skill or her EX skill, Kokona gains one stamp of praise, and once she has five stamps, she will reduce the EX cost of all other teammates, including off-field units, by one. Her final passive increases her overall healing capabilities. As a healer and a support character, Kokona is extremely fun to play. Her EX cost of 2 is just as spammable as Serena's, with very comparable healing for both herself and one other ally. And if you ever do reach 5 stamps, the discount on every other character's EX skill is absurdly useful. Even without this EX cost reduction, Kokona will simply be a great healer that excels in mission clearing, healing-based firing drills, and total assault Hieronymus. If you are able to activate Kokona's EX reduction with 5 stamps, it's important to note that it will only last for one EX activation per ally, as opposed to Ui's that lasts for two EX activations. But I've found this to be a good trade-off for reducing the EX costs of all allies, as opposed to just one. 
That being said, I found it sometimes difficult to activate her EX skill reduction without spamming her EX skill, as her passive healing that activates when allies crit 100 times is a lot less reliable at granting stamps without fast auto-attacking characters. As a result, Kokona's EX reduction will be activated the most frequently during Total Assault Hieronymus, as you'll have four whole minutes to use her skill to debuff the boss and heal allies, which will give you enough stamps to meet that five stamp minimum. Even without activating her EX reduction though, I've still had a lot of fun running Kokona on my teams, and if you like her playstyle, she is well worth building for healing firing drills, mission clearing, and total assault Hieronymus. Kokona's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 6, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gacha rolls. Although most of Shan Haijing's students work in the merchant sectors, a small portion focus on more scientific pursuits, or rather, alchemical pursuits. <laughs> Yakushi Saya specializes in the more mystical arts, creating feats that should be impossible otherwise. When she's not terrorizing her lab rats for her many experiments, Saya enjoys kicking back with some ramen from her favorite local restaurant. Saya's unconventional experiments find their way onto the battlefield, where her EX skill throws a glowing green liquid in a wide AoE, dealing damage to enemies over time. Her passive skill increases her attack, as well as the crit rate of all allies, and every 20 seconds, she launches a small AoE attack at an enemy, while also decreasing their crit rate. As an AoE damage dealer, Saya is quite good at catching large swaths of enemies in her poisonous cloud, which is particularly great for clearing large mobs during firing drills. That being said, Saya does struggle to put out damage during regular mission clearing, as she has a low base attack and damage scaling, so she will need some investment in her equipment and EX skill in order to compensate for this. More importantly, however, Saya's skill costs a whopping 6 to cast, which is quite steep for how low her damage scaling is. I've tried her in a lot of different teams to try and find her best niche, and as much as I want to make her work for missions, she is really expensive for how little damage she contributes. That being said, she is still quite good at chewing through the low health pools of mobs during firing drills, so if you're stubborn like me and still want to use her, that has been my favorite game mode for running Saya. Saya's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 8, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gotcha rolls on any banner or through the Tactical Challenge Shop. When Saya finally takes a moment to leave her lab, she changes into a new set of clothes to enjoy her favorite ramen, but her experimental tendencies are always close at hand. Casual Saya still remains a menace to Shan Hai Jing, but she does pack a more considerable punch in her alternate form. Casual Saya still throws questionable experiments onto the battlefield, but instead of a circular AoE, her EX skill casts a wide rectangle of AoE damage onto her opponents, which will eat away at their health over time. Her passive skills increase her own crit damage, as well as the crit damage of all allies, and every 30 seconds, she'll lob an AoE attack at a group of enemies. Compared to the hefty cost and more limited utility of Saya's regular form, Casual Saya is a much more efficient version. Although Casual Saya's base attack and scaling are still relatively low, 
she benefits greatly from the increased crit damage, and combined with investment in her equipment, she is a much more potent damage dealer for both mission clearing and firing drills. Where casual Saya shines the brightest, however, is Total Assault Chesed, where her EX skill can hit a huge swath of enemies during the second stage of the fight, and her crit damage buff can make it easier for your on-field allies to clear the stage of enemies. Casual Saya is certainly outclassed by other AoE piercing characters, as her EX skill is a little more expensive to cast at 5. That being said, her crit damage scales comparably with some of the best supports in the game, and her own damage output is very defensible for content clearing, especially if you need a good AoE character who can also buff your team. Casual Saya's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 5, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gotcha rolls on any banner. As the most trusted instructor at Plum Blossom Garden, Sunohara Shun is beloved by her young students and peers alike for her calm demeanor and excellent instructions. However, Shun has a bad tendency to shoulder too much responsibility, and she secretly wishes to have more time for herself to unwind. Shun's frequent exhaustion weaves into her unique gameplay, where her EX skill increases her crit rate, auto attack power, and attack range, but decreases her attack speed for 30 seconds. However, her sense of responsibility helps to pull her through, as her passive automatically unlocks 2 to 3.8 EX skill bars at the beginning of battle. Her other passive skills increase her attack power, particularly against person-sized enemies. Shun is an absolutely wild character to play, because I generally find myself avoiding actually activating her EX skill, even though it only costs 3 to cast. Instead, she has unbelievable utility for speeding up the initial casting cost of her allies, as her passive makes 2 to 3.8 EX skill bars available immediately at the start of a fight. As a result, she is run primarily as a way to speed up clear times, as she makes it so other characters can cast their skills faster at the beginning of a fight. Although this can be useful for regular mission clearing, Shun's main utility is for tactical challenge, as well as total assault speedrunners, as she can make the first stages of a fight much faster. With all this in mind, I find Shun to be in a weird spot design-wise, as her EX unlocking passive is fantastic for starting out a fight, but I often let her EX skill sit as dead weight in my EX skill bar, making her less useful the longer a fight drags on. That being said, her EX passive is useful enough to justify sinking in resources to it if you do roll her, and her EX skill is still perfectly castable if you need to get it out of your skill bar. Shun's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 9, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gotcha rolls. While Shun often finds herself overworked at Plum Blossom Garden, she finds a brief respite when Saya accidentally uses her for an experiment, causing Shun to shrink to the same size as her students, and consequently shirk her responsibilities as their teacher. <laughs> Whereas Shun's regular form focuses on letting other characters take their turn first, small Shun is tired of sitting on the sidelines and is ready to deal some damage herself. Her EX skill shoots a gigantic blast of damage at a single opponent, ignoring a sizable portion of their defense as she does so. 
Whenever Small Shun uses her EX skill, her attack will temporarily lower for 20 seconds, but it will massively raise again after that period. Her passive skills increase her attack speed, and every 25 seconds, she deals a hefty shot to a single opponent. Small Shun is one of the few characters who has a unique item which substantially increases her crit damage at friendship level 20. And at friendship level 25, her passive attack skill will deal more damage while ignoring a portion of the enemy's defense. As a damage dealer, Small Shun is tremendously powerful. Her increased attack speed also makes her an excellent auto attacker, although her real strength lies with her EX skill, where she deals a huge amount of damage to an opponent while ignoring a chunk of their defense. Small Shun excels at taking down bosses as a result, whether that is during hard missions, firing drills, or total assault Hieronymus. I have had a blast playing Small Shun in a variety of different game modes, but I should note that she does require considerable investment to bring out her full potential, as her passive will notably decrease her EX damage unless you increase her attack and passive skills to try and compensate for this. This can make her an expensive character to level up, as she greatly benefits from maxing out her EX skill and other equipment. But even without massive investment, her ability to ignore an enemy's defense still makes her a great character, even at lower levels. So if you enjoy her playstyle, she is worth even moderate investment to start dealing huge damage. Small Shun unlocks her recollection lobby at friendship level 6, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gotcha rolls. Although many schools have their own militias to deal with troublemakers, there are still large sections of Kivotos that fall directly under the control of the General Student Council. And when dangerous situations arise, SRT Academy are the special forces that are sent in to deal with them. Or rather, SRT was called in to deal with them until the General Student Council president disappeared. Now, the remaining Sanctum Tower officials have called for SRT's disillusion, and the highly trained operatives have not taken kindly <laughs> to that proposition. As the leader of the Rabbit Platoon, Tsukiyuki Miyako is the face of SRT's resistance, standing up against the General Student Council while still trying to keep her platoon safe. Although they've been forced to reside in a park due to SRT's closure, Miyako still does everything she can to help the citizens of Kivotos and to show them that SRT is still looking out for them. Miyako's firm resolve translates well into her role as a tank, where her EX skill deals a chunk of damage to a single opponent and stuns them for four to five and a half seconds, depending on the skill's level. Her passive skills increase her max HP and decrease the damage she takes while casting her EX skill. And every 40 seconds, she will deal a small AoE attack to a cluster of opponents. As a sturdy tank, Miyako is very defensible for clearing missions, as she can withstand enemy attacks with her high HP while also stunning enemies intermittently. Miyako's stun ability can also be quite useful for Total Assault HOD, where she can help to work through the boss's pillars as well as its main body. Although her base damage won't contribute too much to the boss's health bar without some investment in her equipment. Although Miyako is certainly outclassed by other tanks when it comes to stun damage, she is still very defensible to run for missions, as well as Total Assault HOD if you don't have Hoshino and you need to break through the boss's pillars, which can be quite the nuisance to do so otherwise. 
Miyako's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 6, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gotcha rolls. As SRT's sniping ace, Kasumizawa Miyu has an almost supernatural ability to blend in with her surroundings, which unfortunately makes it very easy for fellow SRT members to accidentally step on her, or even worse, forget that she is still out in the field before leaving for the day. Miyu is quite used to being ignored and forgotten, but she channels this pain into her sniping skills on the battlefield. As an auto-attack character, Miu's EX skill applies a unique debuff onto an opponent called Weakness Detection, which lasts for 10 seconds. During this time, all attacks against that opponent will do extra damage equal to a portion of Miu's attack power. Her passive increases her own crit damage, particularly after reloading. And after every five auto attacks, Miu will deal an extra chunk of damage to a single opponent. Just like other auto attack based characters, Miu's immediate damage output might be less obvious, but her very respectable base attack, as well as her crit damage, make her a pretty powerful damage dealer during the course of a fight. Her EX skill takes a little getting used to, but it can be very effective at shredding through a particularly sturdy opponent, especially if you invest in Miu's attack stats. With her EX skill only costing 3, it is very spammable during a fight, which makes her quite effective for mission clearing and joint firing drills, especially when paired with other powerful damage dealers. All of this being said, Miyu's EX skill does take a little getting used to and does require pretty considerable investment in her attack stats and equipment just to get full utility out of this. In addition, she's best paired with characters who have fast auto attacks just to make full use out of that 10 second span on her EX skill, or if you pair her with characters who also have cheap EX skills, making sure to stack those one after another can really maximize her damage output. Admittedly, Miu is a little outclassed by some other characters when it comes to content like Total Assault, but if you like her playstyle and you need a good piercing damage dealer, she is very respectable and very capable of running that kind of content if you do want to use her. Personally, I've had a lot of fun running her for mission clearing as well as joint firing drills, as she can deal a lot of damage in a very short period of time, especially if you invest in her attack stats. More than anything, I just want this poor girl to feel some love after everything she has gone through. Miu's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 5, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gotcha rolls. As the primary air support for SRT, Kazekura Moe is absolutely obsessed with explosives, to the point that she will frequently burn all of SRT's resources just to have a beautiful firefight. Moe's love of explosives might cause headaches for the rabbit platoon, but it translates into massive damage on the battlefield. Her EX skill deals a gigantic AoE blast, followed up by burning any enemies that are still left standing afterwards. Her passive skills increase her overall attack, as well as the attack of all allies, and every 40 seconds she will deal damage to up to 5 enemies as well as briefly stun them. As an AoE damage dealer, Moe is absurdly fun to play. <laughs> she can hit an incredible number of enemies within the radius of her EX skill, and if anything survives the first blast, the resulting burn damage will help to chew through any remaining enemy health bars. The rectangular AoE of her EX skill is also absurdly flexible, as it can be placed just about anywhere on the battlefield, and with it only costing 4 to cast, it is very easy to recast her EX skill during the course of a fight. Combined with her party-wide attack buff, 
and her passive skill that can damage multiple enemies, she is fantastic for chewing through mobs of opponents, whether it's in missions, commissions, firing drills, and total assault chess ed. Do keep in mind that her massive AoE does have a slight windup, so you'll want to account for that when deciding where to activate her EX skill. In addition, Moe's base attack is relatively low, so investing in her attack equipment and her EX skill to offset this will help a ton, although you don't need to invest too much before she starts dealing a lot of damage. Honestly, I'm pretty impressed with Moe and have really enjoyed playing her. So if you happen to roll her and you want a great attack buffer, as well as a great AoE damage dealer, she is a ton of fun to play and worth the investment in her skills. Moe's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 6, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gotcha rolls on any banner. As the final member of the Rabbit Platoon, Sorai Saki is constantly prepared for battle, spending all her free time thinking of military tactics and attack patterns. Although her personality can be blunt to the point of harshness, Saki cares deeply for the safety of her fellow platoon members, although she'd be deeply embarrassed if that was ever exposed. Saki's military prowess weaves well into her gameplay, where her EX skill deals AoE damage to a small cluster of opponents, inflicting stun for 4-5 to five seconds depending on the skill's level. Her passive skill increases her overall attack, as well as the attack of all other allies, and every 35 seconds, she deals a chunk of damage to a single enemy and inflicts burn damage for 20 seconds. While Saki's ability to buff ally attack makes her very respectable for mission clearing, her greatest strength lies in Total Assault HOD, where her EX skill can inflict stun on both the boss and a pillar at the same time. Her base attack is high enough that Saki can contribute reasonable damage when her EX skill is activated, which is a fantastic combination for getting through that fight. That being said, Saki's AoE is a little small, so it will require some practice for hitting both the pillar and HOD at the same time, and it's a little tricky to use for regular mission clearing or firing drills since it doesn't hit that many enemies at once. However, if you do still want to run her for content outside of Total Assault, I would advise focusing her attacks on larger enemies just to make the best use out of her stun damage. Saki's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 5, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gacha rolls on any banner. While SRT served as the General Council's specialized suppression force, the more general law enforcement duties are performed by the Valkyrie Police Academy, who try to maintain order across Kivotos. However, despite their best efforts, Valkyrie's forces are frequently overwhelmed by the raw power of Kivothos's most notorious delinquents, leaving the Valkyrie Public Safety Bureau to try and pick up the pieces. As the laziest member of the Public Safety Bureau, Nemugaki Fubuki would rather spend her days eating donuts than pursuing delinquents, but with the rest of Valkyrie frequently dropping the ball <laughs> during missions, Fubuki is dragged out time and time again to try and salvage the situation. This isn't to say that Fubuki is especially good at picking up the pieces of Valkyrie's failed missions, but knowing that failure will mean overtime helps to motivate her to subdue troublemakers at all costs. As an auto-attack-based character, Fubuki's EX skill increases her attack substantially for 46 seconds. Her passive skills increase her attack whenever other allies use their EX skills, and she will deal stun damage to a single opponent every time her ammo falls below 3. 
her final passive increases the effectiveness of her stun application. Like all auto-attack characters, Fubuki's immediate impact on the course of a battle might not be immediately apparent, but she is extremely useful for Total Assault HOD, where her quick auto-attacks can frequently proc stun damage onto HOD's pillars as well as the main body. Her increased attack power when other characters utilize their EX skill is also fantastic, as it makes her hit much harder with each subsequent attack. However, Fubuki's excellent damage output does come with some caveats. For one thing, her EX skill leads to her lying down for several seconds, which means she will be stationary while the rest of your team moves forward, which is not the most ideal for mission clearing or for the sections of HOD where your characters run from platform to platform. I've often found myself avoiding using her EX skill entirely until the last stage of the fight, if I even use her EX skill at all, which does mean her EX skill is often dead space on my skill bar. All of this being said, for a character that is given away for free during the Valentine's event, she is an excellent source of stun damage during an otherwise frustrating total assault fight and I would highly suggest building her if you need someone for that fight. Fubuki's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 5, and she is only obtainable from the Chalet's Valentine's Patrol event. In stark contrast to her slothful counterpart, Nakatsukasa Kirino is bursting with energy, determined to prove her worth as an officer of the law and maybe even move up the chain of command. However, Kirino's ambitions are greater than her aptitude, as she has a frightening tendency to miss every target, hitting hostages and civilians instead. Kirino tries to compensate for this devastating clumsiness during battles, where her EX skill will deal AoE damage to a cluster of enemies, while also decreasing their accuracy. Her passive skills increase her own max HP, and every 20 seconds, she deals a chunk of damage to the enemy furthest away from her, while also decreasing their accuracy. She also has a 30% chance to decrease the recovery capabilities of enemies whenever she auto-attacks. As an AoE damage dealer, Kirino can hit a very respectable number of enemies with her EX skill, reducing their accuracy enough to prevent a chunk of oncoming damage. Her passive skills are also very flavorful, <laughs> as they allow her to hit an enemy very far away from her instead of hitting something much more reasonable close by. That being said, Kirino does suffer from significantly diminished base attack, and her damage scaling is also a little low. So if you do enjoy her clumsy personality and you want to play her for missions, you'll want to invest heavily in her equipment to compensate for this. I haven't had the best luck running her for mission clearing myself, but like any character in the game, the more you invest in them, the better they become. And I've seen anecdotal accounts of people who love Kirino and have had a ton of fun running her. So just make sure to invest in her skills and equipment before you run her for missions. Kirino's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 6, and she is a permanent character obtainable by making gacha rolls or during Valkyrie-themed events. Last, but certainly not least, is the high-profile visitor to Kivotos, Hatsune Miku, who does not belong to any one school, but appeared in the city for a brief concert tour. To be completely honest, I was on the fence about even covering Miku, since she has never had a rerun since her initial release, but just in case she does get a rerun, as well as for anyone who pulled on her the first time, I thought this would be a good time to talk about her skills and where she excels in the game. Miku's energetic, infectious singing allows her to support allies during battle, 
where her EX skill brings her onto the battlefield for 26 seconds to cast a wide AoE of healing as well as increased attack for nearby allies. Her passive skills increase her healing capabilities as well as the healing effectiveness for all allies. And every 30 seconds, she increases the crit rate of on-field allies in a small round-shaped AoE. Similarly to Hot Springs Nodoka, Miku will drop onto the battlefield to heal all surrounding allies, which can be a great help for keeping allies up and moving during a mission. Her added attack bonus can make allies hit much harder, which is a nice bonus for activating her EX skill. However, where Miku really shines is healing-based firing drills, where the AoE of her EX skill is wide enough to heal the Sensei puppet while also buffing the attack of nearby allies. As for regular mission clearing, Miku has the same weakness as Hot Springs Nordica in that her healing requires allies to be relatively stationary, which is much less practical when allies are always on the move. But with her ability to buff attack and heal in such a wide AoE, I think she's well worth using for healing-based firing drills if you do happen to have her. Miku's Recollection Lobby unlocks at Friendship Level 6, and she was only available during the Hatsune Miku special live event in Kivotos, which will hopefully get a rerun in the future. And with that, we've almost reached the end of our second review. At the time of this video's release, there are several students who have been added to the global server that I just didn't have time to fully cover here, but I will cover them more fully in a future video. However, for anyone who has pulled these characters and wants a brief summary of their niches and abilities, I have prepared some really quick notes for the newest characters in the game that I didn't have the full time to talk about otherwise. So here we go. Brief summary of all of the characters who have been released since I started writing this. New Year Haruna is a beast of an explosive unit with great AoE and single target damage. She is everything that I wish Swimsuit Hina was, as she is fantastic for both halves of Kaiten. New Year Fuka is an incredible buff unit who cuts the EX skill cost of a selected unit in half while buffing their crit damage, which is absurdly powerful. <laughs> she also increases ally attack, which is amazing. <laughs> New Year Junko is a super cute, very inexpensive damage dealer with a small AoE that only costs two to cast. It's very spammable and easy to build if you need a damage dealer. Mine is an incredible explosive tank who reminds me a lot of Bunny Nehru as she leaps forward and deals AoE damage when she lands, while decreasing defense and evasion of enemies that she hits. Just like in the main story, Mika is stupidly powerful. Her EX skill deals insane damage that scales with enemy HP, and she auto crits, which is just absurd. <laughs> Pair her with New Year Fuka or Himari, and you will have a crazy damage party. <laughs> Kana is a fun, inexpensive backline unit that buffs ally piercing damage, while her EX skill acts a little bit like a mini Wakamo ability. Megu is a very adorable, very tanky AoE damage dealer who has high defense and a nice cone of damage from her flamethrower. Sakurako is a great auto attacker whose EX skill will focus fire on one target, and she deals extra damage against mystic enemies. Toki is a literal Gundam. <laughs> transforming into the Abby Eshu battle suit and dealing progressively larger amounts of damage until her EX skill has been activated three times. Nagisa lives up to her tea party fame by being an absurdly powerful explosive buffer and attacker, with her EX skill shredding the defense of explosive enemies and her passives buffing explosive crit damage. 
I'll be covering all these students in greater detail in future videos, but I wanted to cover them briefly here just in case you happen to pull them and you want to know what their general niches are. In addition, between this video and my first one, several characters have gained unique items that didn't have them for the first video. I've already talked about Nehru, but the following characters have also gained unique items that have fantastic effects. Shiroko's regular form gained a unique item, which substantially increases her crit damage at friendship level 20, and at friendship level 25, her passive AoE skill deals more damage when it hits enemies. Suzumi gained a unique item as well, which increases her crowd control power at friendship level 20, and at friendship level 25, her passive AoE skill will also stun enemies that it hits. And last but not least, Junko's regular form gained a unique item, which increases her base attack at friendship level 20, and at friendship level 25, her passive that activates invincibility will also discount the cost of her EX skill by four <laughs> for two uses. And with that, we have reached the end of our second student review. Whew. <laughs> As for which students I am most looking forward to, I am beyond excited for the new swimsuit girls, especially swimsuit Miyu, swimsuit Hinata, and swimsuit Ui. Oh my word, I love their designs so much! As well as the addition of Kaho, Rumi, and Mina to the permanent banner, and the extremely adorable alternate version of Otis, which I know is permanent, but... <laughs> I want to pull on it so badly. Why is she so adorable? Oh, anyway, thank you for making it this far. I cannot believe how long these videos ended up being. I thought about splitting them into smaller videos by school, but I'm glad I compiled them this way, since it'll make it easier for me to cover a huge swath of students in future videos. In addition to thanking the Blue Archive fan wiki and the hard work of Kazu, I also wanted to shout out the fantastic character animation showcases from the YouTuber Arusu Archive, which were incredibly helpful references when I was writing up descriptions of EX animations. Arisu Archive is a whale on the Japanese server that uses their powers for good. They compile animation showcases for every student, and their videos are incredible if you want to see what characters will look like, whether they're in the cafe, on the battlefield, or in the startup menu. However, for anyone trying to avoid story spoilers, please do note that Arusu Archive is a player on the Japanese server, and as a result, they do have some very spoilery videos. So, if you want to avoid that, I would probably suggest waiting until Volume F is fully released before checking out their channel. Oh, thank you all so much for watching this. Please look forward to more Blue Archive live streams as well as other indie game streams and indie game videos. I'm also hoping to make some more ASMR content soon, so look forward to that! It should be good! I've been meaning to do that for a while, but these videos kept me kind of busy, so <laughs> I'm sorry for folks who have been waiting on that. I really appreciate your patience. Until next time, I hope you all have a fantastic day, and I'll see you all again for this series once we get more characters released on the global server.